Good evening. This is the December 14th, 2023 meeting of the St. Mary's County Board of Appeals, located in the Commissioners of St. Mary's County Meeting Room of the Chesapeake Building, 41770 Baldridge Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. I am Chairperson Dan Nikniaski, and with four other board members present, we have met our minimum requirements for a quorum and will proceed with tonight's meeting. I would now like to ask the board members to introduce themselves, beginning at my right. Good evening. Wayne Medinsky. Ronald Payne. And again, I'm Dan Nikniaski. Good evening, Rich Richardson. Good evening, Guy Bradley. And our attorney. Uh, good evening, Steve Scott, board attorney. And then the staff that is here tonight are uh, Amanda Yowell and Courtney Jenkins and from Public Works, Jesse Harper, correct? And um, Amy Carter in our video meeting, me, video meeting room, um, media room, along with our help. And again, as I said, we have three cases tonight and not four as previously advertised. The Cedar Cove Marina requ request has been withdrawn. And the first case on the agenda this evening will be the Loveville Mine Expansion. And I would ask the staff to stand and please take the oath. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you very much. And Amanda, you may proceed. Requesting a conditional use. Um, requesting a modification to a conditional use to the I'm sorry. Oh. Requesting a modification to the conditional use approval under uh, project number 15 131 05 and 20 131 001 to expand mining operations by 12.2 acres pursuant to chapter 25 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance for use type 82 and extractive industry within the Rural Preservation District. The legal advertisement was printed on November 24th and December 1st in the Southern Maryland News. Certified mailings were sent to adjacent property owners hold located within, oh, sorry guys, bear with me. I have big shoes to fill tonight. Where, where are we going here? Why isn't it? So I have to be clicking over here. I got you. Sorry. <laughs> Been a while since I've done this. Forgive me. Uh, certified mailings were sent to adjacent property owners located within 200 feet of the project property, and a public hearing sign was posted on the property on or before November 29th, 2023. And um, why is it not? I, why is it not giving me my... There we go. So the property owner is Multiflora LLC. The property consists of 62.985 acres and is existing operational service mine. Property is located at uh, 28625 Abel's Way in Loveville. The land use is rural preservation next to a section of mixed uses, low intensity. It's zoned rural preservation district adjacent to a property zoned village center mixed use. The property currently has an existing 52.46 acre operational service mine. A total of 64.66 acres will be dedicated to the surface mine. The applicant is requesting modification of a conditional use for a use type 82 extractive industry 
the comprehensive zoning ordinance defines extractive industry as the removal of natural materials from the surface or subsurface of the earth for sale or further processing. This classification includes sand and gravel mining and mineral extraction. This use is an allowable use within the RPD with conditional use approval. The applicant submitted the site for review on February 7th, 2023. It's been reviewed by the Technical Evaluation Committee review agencies. The site plan has received the Department of Public Works and Transportation, Maryland State Highway Administration, and the St. Mary's County Health Department approval. It's pending land use and growth management, which is contingent upon conditional use approval tonight, and the Soil Conservation District, who's waiting on six sets for stamping and signature. MDE requires an approved sediment and erosion control plan prior to the issuance of an updated mining permit. This is a copy of the site plan modification submitted by the applicant. And this is the modification to, a second here, it's the modification to sheet 12 of the original plan showing the area of the proposed expansion of about 5.7 acres just north of Beaver Lane. And then this is a modification of sheets eight and nine of the original plan showing the area of proposed expansion of about 5.6 acres along Maryland Route 5. Additional documentation that might be relevant in the next slide. I'll leave that for the applicant to explain. And then our next slide begins the standards um, that uh, the board must find when they approve a conditional use. I can read through those if you need me to. And that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions for me? Questions? <coughs> no. I do. Okay. So I read through the board's presentation. I read through the um, attachments and the orders. The board's presentation lists 16 trips per day as a limitation. I don't see that in any other documentation. Where did that number come from? I'm sorry, which presentation lists 16? This one you just oh. showed. It's slide two or three. Okay, let me Maybe get back slide there. four. And you say you don't see that anywhere else? I don't see that in any of the other paperwork that's on the website. I could have missed it, but right there. So Prior approval for 16 trips per day. Where did that come from? Don't give me that look, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I smiled just because we knew the question was coming. That discrepancy was noted by the applicants to, um, council and pointed out to us, or not council, I think it was actually Surveyor Barry Vuckmer who pointed that out and asked us about it. I think that came at least to my attention yesterday afternoon. I was able to look into it this afternoon. Where it comes from, the 16 truck trips a day are referenced in the findings of fact. And on Amanda V., staff report if you could bring up those attachments mm, okay second <coughs> so it's on page 10 of 31 Yes, it is. And you'll see um, third paragraph under finding of facts, last sentence. It says that the applicant at that moment in time, and I think this was, was a much smaller use, anticipated 16 trips a day. Uh, when the order was actually passed, limiting it to 16 trips a day was not an order and was not a subject or condition of approval. And you see that on page 11 of the staff report. If you turn to the next conditional use occupant, or use approval 20-131-0001 and I think you would find this on page 17 of the staff report you'll see again as a finding of fact that the applicant anticipates that adding that wash plant will add an additional 40 to 50 additional trucks per day at least a year in the future but again limiting them to trips per day is not made a condition of the order and isn't part of the approval um, it's an estimate as far as we can tell the only controller the only limitations in those orders are the working hours. 
as far as when, how many trips can be coming through there a day. So that answers your question, Mr. Bradley. It, it does. Thank you for that because you're right. I didn't miss it. And um, so is that anything that we can consider here? Anything this board has jurisdiction over? The number of trips? So conditions and limiting trips is a condition that the Board of Appeals could pass, can't reach back in time and amend a conditional use approval for anything we've got right now. But going forward, yes, you could pass such a condition and often do uh, on other mining projects. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we need to strike this out of our staff report? <clears throat> no, it's in the paperwork. They're right. Huh? We can certainly amend that clerical error after the fact on the presentation after the staff. I think um, as long as the board's confident right now and there's no confusion is that it was not the 16 trips limitation was not a condition of prior approval. As long as the board's clear on that, then I defer to Steve Scott. But I don't think we need to do anything <clears throat> right no, this I, moment I, I, after the fact. I agree with you, John. I think uh, it's important for us to, again, remember that that was uh, the trips per day uh, expected was listed as a, a finding of fact in the prior orders, but was not made a condition okay. of any of the prior orders of this board. Okay. Um, as Mr. Hauser points out, um, that's certainly something we can consider if the testimony and the evidence um, justifies it, and if there is a you know a, a reasonable and rational uh, um, issue or concern of this board that would require that kind of condition. Thank you. Any other questions from the board members? No sir. no, sir. In that case, who will be representing the applicant? Dragon. Dragon. Nine. Dragon. Nine. Bob, while you're there, would you yes. stand, raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. For the record, would you state your name and address? Barrett Bookmer, 22660 Washington Street, Leonardtown, Maryland. Thank you. You may proceed. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Um, on behalf of the applicant, uh, and for the record, my name is Chris Longmore. I'm their legal counsel this evening. Uh, Mr. Vuckmer is going to uh, go through a presentation of the application this evening um, and some of the, the items that I just wanted to highlight before he does, uh, one of them was just discussed, the number of trips. There was, there is no cap, we believe, on the operation as it stands now. And I'll remind the board when we were before you in 2021, uh, the language that Mr. Hauser referenced to you that it was anticipated that the wash plant would add an additional 40 to 50 trips per day throughout that next year. So there was um, some indication and findings by this board that that was an appropriate amount uh, when, when the wash plant was added there. Um, and, and we're certainly willing to, to discuss any questions on that. The other item I'd just like to clarify, um, I believe in the staff PowerPoint presentation um, the hours might not have been uh, the same as in the approval. So I wanted to clarify what the hours are allowed. Uh, the, and they were actually longer in the staff presentation. I think they're off by a half hour um, on either side. So it's the approved hours in the original 2015 conditional use approval that was also carried through to the 2021 approval were well, from Monday through Friday, it was 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Saturdays, there's no mining activities, but it was for maintenance and, and uh, those type of activities. And those hours, I believe, were from 7 to 12 uh, in the afternoon. Um, it was not quite as long as was there. And I think that's in the exhibits of the, of the written staff report. So I, I bring that up to, to make it clear. I know some of the, the neighbors have written letters, and we're happy to, to address some of their concerns this evening as well. Um, but the, we're not asking that the hours be expanded. We're asking that they remain the same and that the conditions that the board previously put on the first conditional use, which the board continued and put on the second conditional use for when the wash plant was added to the site, um, our client is willing and proposing that those conditions remain on the operations with this expansion. 
Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to, to Mr. Vuckmer and he can run through a <coughs> one, and then we'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you, board. Um, so, so, so we've got a pretty quick little slideshow here. Um, the, Mr. Sloan is looking to add about 12 acres to his existing mine. I will remind um, um, or, or just state that we do have an existing approved conditional use with the, a uh, wash plant and we do have a uh, approved water appropriations permit from MDE. Um, so this gives you an aerial view. Um, there's three areas that we're adding. Um, the, the addition one is out near uh, Maryland Route 5 and that property was um, recently acquired since the first mining approval by Mr. Sloan. Um, and then the second piece is a, um, a little triangular addition of uh, about an acre um, yeah, right to the left there a little bit, Amanda. Yeah, right there. Yep. Um, that, that, that was just missed in the first mining plan. And then the, there's another five acres or almost six acres in the back, um, that he's looking to add as well. Um, so this is, is the existing entrance that's approved site distance hasn't changed. We're not looking at adding any, any additional traffic on the entrance. Um, this is a detailed area of um, the front addition. And this is a picture of it from, the, from um, Maryland 5. And the, these are the back two areas that, that we're looking to add, 5.7 acres and 0.92 acres. And um, the one on the left is the area two, that's the 0.92 acres. The one in the back is the rear of the existing mine, the woodland that we're looking to add as well. Uh, these are some of the signage that the applicant posted in October uh, to help quell the uh, engine brakes. And then this is, uh, on the right is northbound 247 and on the left is as you exit the mine. And Mr. Buckmer, do you mind just sharing with the board a little bit about kind of the screening and buffers and whether this meets the requirements of the? Uh, it does. So, so, so these are um, per per MDE. The the buffer is 25 feet, and also Amanda, if you can if we can go back to uh, sure. Yeah, to this one here, please. The slide. I'm trying to get back to the first. Mine's not working. Okay. Where do you want to go this? Uh, next slide. Uh, forward. Forward. One more. Okay. Yeah, so, so, the, so the front uh, piece is going to be screened by a four-foot berm as well. I don't know if you can see it on the plan there, if you can highlight that. Um, yes. Yeah, it'll go down Abel's Way, and it'll stretch across the entire... Uh, frontage of five and then down Mr. Bailey's property on the on the uh, southbound side. So and, and do, I, I believe you said it does that meet all the standards for mining buffers? And, it does. And setbacks? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> right. Uh, board, we believe the ac application is fairly clear. There is an existing mine on the property. Uh, this is adding the 12 acres uh, roughly to the property. Um, I'll highlight what Mr. Buckmer had just testified to, that um, our client did um, see the, the letters that were submitted by a couple of the neighbors and took that to heart. Uh, he went and added more signage, and he's been monitoring uh, the turns out of the site to make sure it complies with the conditions of the original conditional use approval, so it was a right turn. Only he has added that signage and, and has been monitoring that. Um, there are also the signs that he put on there for no engine braking um, on both Route five and two forty seven. Is that is that correct? The signage for Not that on two two forty seven. Oh. It, it, it's only on five. Okay, on yes. five coming on where the trucks are coming in and also leaving the leaving the location. So um, he has taken some efforts to address some of those concerns right away, even before he came here tonight. Um, so we're happy to answer any questions about that. This board has already made the findings a couple of times that a conditional use is appropriate in this location for this use. And of course, we're here tonight for this expansion. 
uh, really not to expand the operations in any sense. And Mr. Sloan can, can confirm that. It's really they're running out of the land that they're mining and they're moving to the next portions that are adjacent to the mine that's there now and want to continue their operation. So, Any questions from the board members? Yes. Uh, on the initial 52 <coughs> acres, when did you start the operation and when do you expect to finish that portion? I think Randy may need yeah. to answer that. We can ask Mr. Sloan is here, the operator, but we can ask him to come up and he can answer that that question so we make sure it's accurate. Want to sit next to Barry or open mic? Okay, Mr. Sloan, would you state your name and address for the record? My name is Randall Sloan. And then would you please stand and take the oath? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Please go ahead. The question was when it began. Yeah, on the initial 52 acres, when did you when did you start and when did you expect to finish that portion? We started probably in 2012. And as per um, a date of conclusion, with this addition, I expect it'll be probably another eight to ten eight to ten years. With this addition, right? Okay. No, on the initial 52, when do you expect to be finished? So, so without the expansion, when, when, when did you have projected you would be done without the additional 12 that we're adding now? Probably another three to four years. From now? Right. With this, with the 52 acres on site. I'm sorry, I can't hear. I'm, I'm a little bit hard to hear. I say with the 52 acres that's on site, we would have possibly concluded that in, in three or four more years. Okay. And if you get the, the approval for 12, 12 more acres, how many more years would that extend the, extend the project? I would expect another four to five. Four or five beyond the two or three or four or five total? Beyond. 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 Okay. So this is going to go on for another four or five years, plus the two or three on the initial 52. So we're talking another seven years then. Seven or eight or, or more, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Sloan, uh, how many uh, trucks do you have that haul gravel? We personally have about 15. 15, okay. And do you hire contract people? We have 12 to 15 independent contractors, yes. Okay. So you're kind of, in essence, you're kind of, responsible for them too right okay thank you any other questions yeah um so talking about the working hours uh for the saturday because in the letters um see which one so i get the right letter i don't want to call it the wrong neighbor um because you had two letters that came in one was from the Hancocks and one was from the uh, the Whites <clears throat> and in one of those two letters they talk about the Saturday operations going on beyond uh, 12 o'clock which is one of the conditions um, so my concern is that they're willing to put this in writing put their name to it and put their address out for the world to see, saying that the operations on Saturday are going beyond 12 o'clock. Is that true? Have y'all been doing anything past 12 o'clock? Go ahead, sir. Uh, we do not, we are not open Saturdays. Since COVID, we, sh we shut the other operation down on Saturdays, and this operation has never been open on Saturday. Okay. Um, the other thing is talking about the engine braking when did y'all put up the signs saying no engine braking in october in october so those are basically recent fairly recent additions what was the policy before then about engine braking was it just a verbal or <clears throat> what was the guidance did the guidance come about because of the letter is basically what i'm asking that's that's what brought it up okay have you met with any of your neighbors and about their concerns at all? I spoke with uh, Mr. Mark Hancock when he's here. 
I spoke to Mr. Guy, Mr. And Mrs. Guy. I met, spoke with Mr. Lacey, which is here not this week, but um, probably possibly in October. I spoke with him, and there's another Mr. Dyson that has buses a little closer to 247. He does not live there, but I spoke with him also. Okay. And several other neighbors. I drove in their driveways, but I didn't look like it was anybody home, so I didn't knock on the door. But I have attempted to communicate. All right. Hopefully those are all positive. Um, we'll find out when we hear from them. The other thing is Three Notch Trail is right there. And my family and I use that trail. Um, so. I'm sorry? Three Notch Trail, the crossing. Not not in Loveville. What's the? This is all the Loveville pit. Oh, okay. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind. I saw a picture. It threw me off. My bad. Um, anyway. So. With that, it sounds like you've talked to the neighbors, some of the neighbors. You've put up signage in response to their concerns. It's the, you've got 15 trucks, you've got 12 contractors that do. So you're doing probably 30 to 40 runs, uh, 30 to 40 trips a day. About that? Uh, you could probably double that. Really? So probably 70, 80? trips a day and that's normal all right <clears throat> and your working hours on saturday you said you're not open on saturday and you're doing the staying within the working hours during the rest of the week we make every attempt to yes okay um, have you had noise complaints or anything from the neighbors prior to this uh this hearing coming up not that i'm aware of okay all right that's all the questions I have, sir. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? No. No, the, the buffer um, along Maryland Route 5, you're saying that that buffer right there is only going to be about 20, uh, 25 feet? Or? 25 feet, yes, sir. And is that a county requirement or a state allowance? That's a, that's a state requirement. And the county's buffer along the main road would be more than that? For mining? For my, yes, for mine. Uh, the, the county, I don't think, regulates buffers anymore. Per, and I can defer to Chris on that. Right. The, for yeah, the, I, was, for I was getting to that point, but but the the question is, is that the county's buffer requirements is more than the state's? The the county zoning requirements, yes, were were are, are more than the state's. Okay. That that is correct. I remember. Now, next question is: I remember at the last meeting we talked a lot about the well water and the well supply for the people across the street and what happens if their wells go dry. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a lot of discussion about mm -hmm. if that would happen with perhaps a groundwater well, maybe or maybe not. Right. But if it's a deep aquifer well, that was highly unlikely. Correct. And Mr. Sloan at the time, I think, agreed to meet with the people. And if anything happened, he would take care of that. I, yeah. I believe in that, uh, in that approval, which is attached to the staff report, Mr. Sloan agreed to replace any mines that failed as a result of his work within a half mile radius. So that was a express condition of that conditional use. And he had agreed to that on the record okay. um, when we were here three years ago. Any other questions from the board members? No, sir. Thank you all. We may have some more questions later. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, open the meeting now up to public testimony. If there's anybody that would like to speak to the issue, please step forward. Would you state your name and address for the record? Corey White, 28630 Point Lookout Road. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may proceed. Uh, so our concern is, mine and my wife, is for the front edition one. We live directly across on Route 5 from that one. Uh, we expressed some of their concerns previously in our written, but just wanted to recap some of those and add on to those. Um, we do also appreciate Sloan for putting up the engine braking and that seemed to help a lot, and also the right turnout decreased traffic significant. 
Uh, so we still are concerned about the noise though. They will be moving mining significantly closer, like right across the street from our address. So noise disturbances would be a concern. Uh, then we are largely concerned too with devaluation of our property. We own, uh, we own the house, so if living route fives width away from a mining operation does not really seem to increase the appeal of the property. Uh, air pollution too, with them moving that close and then mining, you know, dust particles, be concerned of with how the wind blows coming into our yard, affecting our quality of life outside. Uh, seems like, you know, he's increasing gravel production, so that would be in further increase in trips of truckloads past the, it seems like 70 truckloads a day. And then we do have still some concerns regarding contamination of the well, not necessarily the driving, uh, drying up, but just since they're so much closer to our property line, if there is contamination to that well water or the aquifer, um, you know, would we be held responsible, so on and so forth. Um, and then we have one more concern. It's mainly with the conditional use on how it's supposed to be returning the land to its original state post mining operations. Uh, just, I was curious how that worked if who's in charge of doing that with Sloan and say they go bankrupt or whatever, what happens to that operation? Does it just get halted and then just is up for someone else? You know, if we're staying at this location for many years, we wanna see what the outlook of, you know, property values would be. That's it. Any questions of the of the? No, I'm not, I guess um, Mr. Longmore will address these. Right. When he comes back. Right. Okay. I, I think there's a bonding requirement from the state. We'll let yeah, Mr. I'm sure you'll address Moore. this. Okay. So my question to you, sir, have you talked to Mr. Sloan about any of your concerns at all? No. We have not had a chance to talk yet. Well, I hope you get that chance tonight. All right. Thank you. Okay. The next speaker that I have on the list is a Jerry, uh, excuse me, Joan Snodderly. Correct. Ah. Actually, Would my maiden please? name is Bowles. Bowles, okay. Uh, would you please state your name and address for okay. the record? My name is Joan Bowles Snodderly, and I live at 28360 Point Lookout Road, which is right smack in the middle of all this. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Absolutely. Thank you. Please go ahead. I have the same concerns Mr. White has, but I also want to point out that this is a nice little sleepy town. This is not a town where we need additional traffic. Where they're coming out of these Abel's Lane or whatever it is, and they're coming out um, even further down, closer to 247, we already have a lot of traffic that goes to and from north and south, from Leonardtown, to all the way up to Mechanicsville. This is the only road we have. And when you have these dump trucks, and I'm talking about, you can, you're can you talking about an additional 16, you can have a, at least 16 before 12 o'clock. This traffic is going to be double that if we continue allowing all of these dump trucks and sometimes it's one right after the other. And it's not just Mr. Sloan's, it's the contractors coming out. They're leaving gravel on the main road. Uh, he has been better about sweeping it, but when it rains and they come out in the red clay and the gravel's out on the road, it's chipping people's cars up, chipping their windshields. Now, I also wanna point out the time that they start in the morning, in the spring and summer and fall, you can be in your bed, and at 6 o'clock in the morning, you're hearing the jig breaks. That, like, again, like I said, again, this is a sleepy town. We've got people living here, and, you know, we've got to be, be mindful of them as well as a business. And I have concerns about property values and also the water table. And I talked to Patuxent Well the last time Mr. Sloan went forward with proposing additional mining rights. And they said that the dug wells are more in jeopardy than the artesian wells. And at that time, I helped my mother write a letter, went to Baltimore to discuss the same problem about the water tables. We've got to, we've got to make sure our community is safe and it is, stays intact. I don't mind, you know, people coming into the county or into Loveville and having businesses, 
But we also got to remember, this is one lane in and one lane out. This is not a dual highway. And people are driving from Morganza all the way down past the Loveville Post Office. They're not doing the speed limits. These trucks are coming out. People are slamming on their brakes not to hit them. Then they come across. They're allowed to come out and come up the buggy path and then merge over. A lot of times people don't get it, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, it's just we've got to be careful in how many of these trucks are out here on this highway coming across from Abel's to, five, to Right 5 onto 247. We also got to be mindful of property values. The hours, if they're going to start work at 7 o'clock, then you start at 7. You don't start at 6. The only time we get peace and quiet is Saturdays and Sundays because of the noise from the Jake Briggs and, of course, these trucks, you know, picking up speed and, and all of that. Okay. Do the board members have any questions? No. Just the one that I'm probably going to ask everybody is, Did you have you talked to Mr. Sloan about any of your concerns? No, I have not. Uh, not since we wrote the letter a couple years ago. Um, we were assured that if anything happened with the wells, that he would come in and take care of it. But I think we need to put that in there again to make sure, because you do have people that have dug wells there. Okay. okay. And then with the uh, public safety comments, have you sent anything or contacted the Office of Public Safety at all about no, I any have of the not, concerns? Because I did not know that they were talking about adding additional mm -hmm. trucks. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Mr. Longmore, you got any questions? Pardon? Ms. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, the next I have is Mr. Sloan. And again, would you state your name and address for the record? My name is J.D. Lacey, 28640 Loveville, Maryland, directly across from the pond where he's doing his thing. Would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. You may proceed. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend uh, Mr. Sloan. He, uh, we complained about the noise and the engine brakes on the truck, and their signs are up, and the noise has drastically been reduced. The other thing that I'm questioning is, this is a mine site. Um, the removal, in my opinion, it's removal of gravel and sand and stuff. Well, there is riprap and big blue boulders over there. And I don't know if that's under the conditional use or not, but when the trucks come in, they beat and bang, and they make noise, and uh, I'm just wondering about that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions from the board members? No, sir. Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next, I guess, I have on the list again is Mr. Sloan. That, that, that's my client. Yeah, he signed it. We just signed it up. Okay. Um, then Mr. Mark Hancock. For the record, would you please state your name and address? Good evening. My name is Mark Hancock. I'm at 28630, I mean 650 Point Lookout Road, uh, Leonardtown, Loveville. Then would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare and affirm, and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please proceed. So, uh, Mr. White addressed a lot of the concerns that I had. Um, I guess one question I really have and I really don't understand is, so a conditional use was granted uh, for this operation, and we've since expanded it to a, a wash plant and now we want to extend it to the 12 acres out front and the acreage in the back. How do you, I mean, does a conditional use mean 
you can just reapply and you can continue to move and, and do what you want because it should have been conditional in the beginning and that should be it. Is that, is that the right term there or is that, am I wrong? I think Mr. Scott should help answer that question. <clears throat> so, Mr. Hancock, um, the, the um, conditional use that was originally granted uh, was applicable to the the land that was in the original application, and now the applicant is asking for that conditional use to be applied to this additional land. So, yeah, there's nothing in the comprehensive zoning ordinance that would prohibit him from coming back and asking for an amendment or an ex expansion of his conditional use. Yeah. Doesn't seem right to me, but I guess that's how that works. Yeah. So I guess, you know, my biggest thing is probably, I'm not so much upset with the mining operation that he's been doing that. Um, and, and it's just extending it out to the front, out to the road, because that comes close to all of our properties there. Like it's, we're coming at you right here, you know, 25 feet off the highway. And a four foot berm is really, if you put trees on, I guess whatever. I mean, it's it's not really gonna, you know, I just picture the, the digging and the banging and the clanging that's gonna go on, you know, when, when people are trying to sleep and, or whatever, who maybe people work nights, I don't know. But would you want it in your neighborhood like that close? I mean, he's already doing his operation and, you know, everybody's okay with that. But do we really need to bring it right close to everybody? That's, that's my biggest uh, question to the board, so. Board members have any questions? You actually live across the road, or you just have the business? So, so I have the business across right. the street. Yeah, I know that. So I'm, I'm there during the day most of the time. During the day. And Mr. White's um, son-in-law, they live right across the street. Um, so, so we're we're all right there. We all have property. There. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. You know. I'm, I'm very familiar, as you know. I'm very familiar with that yeah. area. Yeah. But. Thus far, you, you really doesn't, other than the Jake breaking, and I understand that, and I understand why the drivers do it also. It preserves the brakes, I understand that. But The, the operation doesn't really bother me. Okay. I, I don't sleep there, but, <clears throat> right. but my daughter does, my son-in-law does, my brother does, other family members and friends right. that live there. Um, that's why I'm saying, why do we need to bring it out? You know, why do we need to get to 12 acres in the front? You know, don't we have enough in the back that we're working on? I don't think it's 12 acres in the front, but... Well, isn't, that, isn't that the partial in the front they're talking about? I think that way. I'm not sure. That they'll address that. I thought that was smaller than 12 acres, but okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board yes. members? Mr. Longmore. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, so am I correct on 12 acres? It's 5.6. It's 5.6. Okay. So, <coughs> okay. So the 5.6. Right. Okay. Out of all the land there, do we need to really do the 5.6 right in the front? That's, okay. That's my concern. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak uh, for or against the project? For the record, would you state your name and address? Delaney White, 28630 Point Lookout Road. And then would you please raise your right hand? Do you declare on a firm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please proceed. Um, similar to what my husband, Mr. White, uh, Corey said, and Mr. Hancock said, I just wanted to reiterate, we live directly across the street, um, and the four-foot berm that has been discussed for helping alleviate some of our noise concerns and just the general ugliness, for lack of a better word, of the mine in our, um, directly across the street from our house, I don't think the four-foot berm is going to do anything to help with those concerns when I stand in our front window and look outside. I'll be able to easily see over the four foot berm. I don't think it's gonna help that much with noise. So that's my primary um, concern moving forward. When we moved into this house just a couple months ago and purchased it, we knew there was a gravel plant. We were okay with the distance, uh, but bringing it directly across the street from our house is really concerning for us, especially when we uh, think about trying to sell the property in the future. As someone who just purchased a house, I can't imagine buying a house directly across the street from a gravel plant. I think it'll be really hard for us to sell the house um, and you know get our the property value out of it. So that's my primary concern about the expansion. Board members have any questions? No. No, sir. No, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else? 
in that case, I will close the meeting to all verbal and written public comment. And I think maybe Mr. Longmore and Mr. Vuckmore and Mr. Sloan will come up and address the comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll do my best to address the questions, but of course, if the members have any questions for any of us, and I've asked Mr. Vuckmore and Mr. Sloan to be here um, in case there's any follow-ups that, that, that I don't uh, correctly address. Um, just to run through some of the points I heard, <coughs> the, the plan of Mr. Sloan is not to add more trips to what's already happening now. It's to expand the ground that's there to continue his operation. He does not expect to be mining this at the same time as the other areas he's going to progress into it, um, like you do with a mine. This is not to expand the number of trips. Um, I heard a, a comment that it sounded like the language from the staff report suggested there'd be some additional trips because of this, or maybe what I said when I got up here. Uh, but that is not the intent of this expansion. It's to, to finish doing the mining that he's been doing and mine the adjacent property, essentially with the same number of trips uh, that he has now. Um, as to the um, reclamation question, uh, the, it is bonded through the Maryland Department of Environment that the property be reclaimed at the end of the mining. Uh, he does have an active mining permit. Um, he can confirm that, or, or Mr. Sloan, that's correct, right? That is Barry? correct. Yes. Yeah, so that's... So if, so if he defaults or something ha terribly happens that we don't want to see happen and he goes out of business, there is money there to restore the property as it was intended to. That's correct. There's a bond that Mr. Sloan had to put up and pay for that's there to cover that, like, an, like insurance, essentially, to make sure uh, that that happens. Uh, there is, there is uh, Mr. Vuckmer mentioned that there is um, a state permit, and MD does regularly inspect these operations to make sure it complies with the uh, state rules. <coughs> um, there are some questions from the board. Uh, before and several members of, of the neighborhood uh, discuss the the frontage on Route 5 and the distance that is there, the 25 feet that's proposed. Um, for the record, as his attorney, we believe that those um, buffer yards are governed by state law. Um, as the board may remember, there was some discussion last time about certain areas of mining are preempted by the state where the county does have the right to regulate items that are more typical zoning uh, type rules. Unfortunately, that case did not give us a bright line test of what was what. We hold the position that the state rules would govern on it, but in speaking to Mr. Uh, Sloan during the testimony, um, he is amenable to double that from 25 feet to 50 feet to address some of the concerns of his neighbors. And as you heard, uh, those had not been raised to him beforehand. They're being raised uh, here tonight. And if he does that, he can raise the berm up to six feet instead of four feet to try to address some of the concerns. Um, and obviously, when you're mining, you end up going lower into the ground as you mine. Initially, of course, you're on the surface. Uh, but that berm will not get higher, but the mining activity will be under it, and that will, we think, assist some. Um, so he's willing to offer that and either amend that or have that placed as a condition uh, and, this evening. And would that include... Um any type of vegetative planting along? Yeah, uh, yeah. Barry, do you want to talk to what the berm would consist yeah, of? So, so typically in the past, the board has approved us to do a uh, modified type C buffer um, without shrubs, and we would change the uh, evergreen trees to Leland's. It's yeah, what we've done in the past. In okay. the last few years. So you're going to raise the berm, plant vegetation across the top of it, Leland trees, mm -hmm. and then also increase the buffer. Yeah, double the buffer from what was proposed from 25 feet to 50 feet to try to address some of those concerns on Route 5. Raise the height point. of the berm by another yeah. two feet. Yeah, and y'all are doing that voluntarily. Okay. That, that's correct. We're, we're proffering that to address some of the concerns that Mr. Sloan heard here tonight. Um, the um, I'm just going through some of the... Uh, there, there was some. There was a mention that vehicles are getting damaged by by gravel. And Mr. Sloan shared with me that he's never received any complaints of that uh, from anybody. That gravel on the road has done that. If if it's happened, nobody has asked him to address it, and he does try to try to sweep it as as the um, testimony suggested. While we're at that point, the one photo did show a lot of dirt being dragged out onto the road onto. The Maryland Route 5. Is there a provision in the state permit 
that requires watering, sweeping, or such clearing of the roadway? Barry, can you, Barry or Mr. Sloan, do you want to, since I can't The permit you. does require that we sweep or use water to maintain the roadways as needed. Okay. So and, as needed is just defined as when you guys go out and see it, or is there a scheduled maintenance cycle? What is defined as needed, sir? It's probably if we um, see it needs to be done, when it, when we see that it needs to be done. All right, because like the chairman pointed out in one of your photos, it's a dirty road. It's obviously mining trucks, so as needed may need to increase. You may want to take another look at that. Right. And if that is covered by the state permit, it's enforced by the state highway in some way or another. Correct. Yes, so they would correct. be the ones to contact for any type of enforcement yes, action. Sir. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, and the only other point I, I, I'd make, and this goes um, to some of the comments generally, this is the district where this type of operation is allowed according to our zoning ordinance with a with a conditional use approval, of course. And one of the standards is showing that it is consistent with our comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Section 5.12 of our comprehensive plan um, recognizes that mining is an important economic activity and regulations shall encourage the utilization of these resources in our county. This is specifically in our comprehensive plan to promote this. Mr. Sloan, I think, um, we believe he's demonstrated both by addressing the written comments that had come in previously uh, before we came here tonight and listening tonight and offering some of the relief that, that we've already offered um, is showing that he's trying to be as good of a neighbor as he can and still engage in the business which has existed there for a while and is encouraged through our comprehensive plan. Um, so we believe that that supports our application um, here tonight. Um, the other question came up about the frontage, just for the record. The, the front piece is about 5.6 acres. Of course, the berm will it'll be the same size of, of property, but less of it uh, would be mined if the, if the berm and if the, the buffer is, is pushed back 25 feet. So I think those were the questions I had written down. I may have missed some. The, the, only, the only other issue you might want to address is the water wells. Sure. The, the water wells... Um, at the hearing in 2021, I recall that issue being raised by some of the neighbors. Um, as I, I briefly started to mention before, Mr. Sloan agreed to a condition at that time that if any of those dug wells failed as a result of any of his activities within, a, I believe it was a half mile radius of this operation, um, that he would agree to replace those wells. To my knowledge, n nobody has come to him and said that any of them have failed in the, in the three years since that condition has been in place. He is willing to continue that condition um, and expects the board to continue that in this approval tonight. <clears throat> Just to clarify, the, the language of the prior condition was within one half mile of the on-site pond. That's and correct. I think we were we were discussing that when when the wash plant was added. Yeah, I, I watched the hearing before this hearing, and I know many of you were, were on the board then. Um, there was some discussion should have run from the center of the pond. Where would the radius run from? I believe it was from the, 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 the pond that extracts the water that the wash plant was using. It was a half mile radius beyond that. It started a discussion of a quarter of a mile, and there were some citizens here that lived, we thought, maybe just outside of that. So Mr. Sloan offered to extend it to a half mile from there. Um, and that was a condition that was placed on. So is that radius going to stay the same with expanded operations? And we haven't had any problems, right, at this time. And, and you've been there for how long now? 2012. So Mr. Longmore, is the, is the pond being moved? It's not being moved, is it? Is the pond? No, no the pond's in the same location. That's where they okay. extract the water from for the wash plant and the other activity. Okay. Mr. Sully, has you had any violations in the last five years on your mining operation? No. Uh, I've heard testimony about the dozens of trucks going back and forth. Has there been any documented vehicle accidents? Not that we're, not that our trucks were involved in. There's so been lots of accidents, but not, not with the dump trucks. It's been fatal. I mean, I so there's no vehicle accidents with the, with the dump trucks in the last five years? 
not in love with what I'm aware of. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think 50 feet is awful generous. I don't know how much that uh, equates to, but um, I like the six, six feet. I think that's good. Um, Mr. Sloan, when do you expect to start on the five acres in the front? Because that seems to be the biggest talking point here. Sometime by the middle of, of 24, I would expect. So you, Early you, middle part of 24. Yeah, so you're going to start on that pretty soon. Okay. I, I was just hoping from testimony of your neighbors that the berm and the, and the tree plantings or whatever, if, if this is approved, could you know start as soon as possible for that and get that ad addressed before the actual mining. Right. That would yeah. be... Uh, I, I knew the berm would be put in and seeded and strawed, but right. planting shrubs and stuff like that needs to be done at the right time of the season. Right. Or your, I, I understand that. Okay. But yeah, I, I, we could put up a a fence or something like that temporarily if that would accommodate. No, I don't think that's necessary. I mean, I don't. I don't think that. I, mean, yeah. I was just wondering the pro progression. Mm -hmm. But he's mm -hmm. got to wait till the spring to do any plantings just so to live or. Okay. Okay. No, sir. Could we hear from public safety after these guys are finished? We've got a couple of questions for them since they're in the house. Keep going. Hmm? Public safety since they're in the house. I'm, I'm sorry. Public, sa the public safety's in the house. Could I ask them a couple of questions? Cool. I know Mr. Gosh isn't here, and you know how much I like calling him out. It's all Number public. two is here. He, this, this is all state road. It is, but there's things that the county is also responsible for, true? Mm -hmm. The county does, well, you can ask him. The county does public roads, the state does state roads. Yeah. Well, let's ask. Sir? Would you state your name for the record? Uh, Jesse Harp, uh, Engineer 3 DPW. Would you please raise your right hand? Um, you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. So when Mr. Gosh is here, I sometimes invite him to speak, especially on mining operations, because the public has a very real concern about truck traffic and the impacts to the surrounding area. Um, you've heard us talk about accidents, you've, and I know these are state roads, Vice County roads, I understand that, but I'm sure there's data out there. You've heard us talk about accidents, you've heard us uh, mention how the direction of travel, talk about the trucks going north or south on the different roads, and the conditions of the roads. So with that said, is there anything that the county can do on these roads to alleviate some of the concerns that some of the citizens have in that area around the mine? Uh, typically they're run by the state, but we can reach out and see if there's anything else that can be done on them. All right. What about accident reports or accident studies? Can you do those on those roads? That would be a traffic engineer and have to reach out to them. Okay. So please take that information back and whatever y'all can do, please take a look at. Will do. All right, thank you. That's all I have, sir. Any other questions? No, sir. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, just for the record, we do have a letter addressing the standards, and they are addressed in the staff report. Uh, I know that those are all made part of the record, but that's, just that's so correct. It's clear. Anybody have any questions on the standards? No, sir. Okay. In that case, I guess we'll close the meeting to all public testimony and open it up for board discussion and decision. I'd say I think it's important the questions that I ask about the violations for the mining operation. I said you had no violations. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. The second thing is they talked about all these trucks going back and forth and loud noise. I'm sure that's true. But as far as safety, there's been no violations as auto, auto accidents uh, that, that caused any accidents either to the Amish or the other people. And this is only a continuation of what we've already approved. So I, I think we ought to go for it. 
So one of the big confusions early on was the number of trips um, because that does impact everybody around. But it's good to hear they're not going to increase the number of trips. But the actual number of trips that they estimated in 2018, or excuse me, 2021, sounds like it's more than, or excuse me, the number that they estimated is less than what they're actually doing. So Mr. Sloan did say he's doing anywhere around 70, but they had estimated 40 to, or 50 to 60 um, in that discussion. Is there anything we need to talk about to address that at all, or can we even do that? Can we do that? Um, <clears throat> as we've discussed, there's some level of preemption of state law here. Um, <clears throat> and there, there are uh, court cases, uh, appellate level court cases that try to interpret exactly what the legislature meant by that preemption under the the Surface Mining Act. Um, but I think the easiest way to understand it is that um, the courts seem to leave in these uh, cases for the local zoning authorities the ability to regulate these uh, mining projects um, in the area of classic zoning concerns. And I think classic zoning concerns um, is uh, certainly sometimes up for interpretation, but I think the the effect and the uh, um, uh, the outcome of these projects on the neighboring and surrounding landowners and the uh, community is a classic zoning concern. So there's my long answer to yes, you can you can address those issues, that kind of issue. Yes. So is this something we as a board? feel the need to discuss and put a cap on or a limitation of any type? Is it a concern? I, no. I, I would say that, I'm sorry, I would say that if you're going to add conditions to your, uh, uh, to your order in this case, if you do decide to approve the application, um, as we've done in the past, those conditions should be reasonably re related to a, uh, you know, a, a, a valid concern of this board. And I think we've consistently held that um, and not simply a, an arbitrary condition. But I think, again, if you go to the, um, the testimony of the citizens and the con concern about this, uh, the, the safety of, uh, of uh, motorists and pedestrians, I think uh, uh, the issue of uh, the number of trips per day is a, is a concern and is something you can, you can place in your conditions so long as it's reasonably related to the testimony. With the with what we sign, the conditions, we will have to restate those that were previously done, or we will state new ones in addition to that. Uh, <clears throat> I believe the testimony was that the um, the applicant is willing to um, continue to follow the existing conditions and the existing orders, and I think if there are any additional conditions, obviously those will have to be added. I think Mr. Longmore may want to. Uh, chime in here um, yeah, so we are willing to agree to all the current conditions that are on there now I wanted to just clarify what is in the prior order from 2021 and I'll just read it verbatim mm -hmm. it said the applicant anticipates 40 to 50 additional trucks per day at least a year in the future so that was not a representation of the total trucks per day those were the additional trucks with the wash plant being approved on there so I believe his testimony is consistent with the numbers that it hasn't gone up from what was stated there. But Right, I, I and I wasn't trying to imply that Mr. Sloan was deceiving in any way. My question is, in the concern of the neighbors, was the number of trips, because that was a talking point early on. And, and My Mr. question was... Mr. Longmore, the, the testimony was there are 70 to 80 trips per day? That's yeah. correct. And, and when the wash plant got added, he said there'd be 40 to 50 more than what were already existing. So 40 before. plus 16 is 56, and 40 plus 50, or 16 plus 50 is 66, and he said 70. So my question is, to the board, looking for the wisdom from um, more experienced people, 
is, is this something that we want to discuss capping or putting a limit on to limit the number of trips? Because it sounds like he's close to his estimation, depending on which way you read the numbers. Is there a reason that we would think that we need to cap that number and say, okay, just don't do any more than this number of trips? So that way, expansion of the mine and mining operations doesn't increase traffic and concerns with the neighbors. See what I'm see where I'm going with that? Yeah, I, I understand your question. I mean, I can I'd have to confer with my client to see his direct thoughts on a cap. We haven't discussed that because that hasn't come out at either of the other two hearings on this mine. Um, so I don't know that he was anticipating that in the prior approvals by the board. It kind of did do. because we had an estimation in the previous one, and then the number presented was a little bit higher than the, the combination of the two estimations. So that's why I want to talk talk this through right? because I think it's an important point. So we understand that. I just wanted to clarify that it, we think we're, we're very close to the numbers that were the estimates so Right, far. and I wasn't trying to imply that y'all weren't. Okay. With, so with the prior approvals and the approval of this, the number of trips per day will be 70? About. Um, I can, is that? L let me have Mr. Mr. Sloan say that because I want to make sure that, that I'm correct on this. Okay. That's probably a good average. But, um, you know, contractors, when we had a contractor down at Third Gate, he wanted a whole lot of material. He was building a, building a pad for a uh, site, and he needed a lot of material. And if I had to cut him off when we got right to 70 loads, I mean, it adds to his job, it adds expense, and I know that's not important, but it fluctuates from the demand of the customer and the availability of the trucks, the customer has of trucks. He might send a lot one day and the next day he's pouring asphalt or hauling something else, it varies. So, it, you know, there needs to be some fluctuation. 70 is a good average, but could we go up, we go down, and it's hard to, totally freeze it at one point because of the customer base that we have to deal with. Hmm. And there's some days I imagine where you'll have none. Oh, that's you know. part of it, but nobody knows that. Hmm. But no, we do not have those days. There's, there's, the neighbors are right. There's always trucks. Even on rainy days, we have customers, but it does drop down. Okay. I think if, if we were to limit the number of trips that would extend the duration of the project. Yeah, probably. What do you guys think? Am I? Well, we're talking about an average, so what would the variation be from high to low? Well, I think that what they estimated, they were pretty close because of what he's actually seeing. I agree with him that if we try to put a hard and fast cap on it, there's going to be consequences on both sides. However, the neighbors do have a concern at the amount, the number of trucks on that road, and the impact to them um, is worth considering because they live, sleep, and eat right there. Mm -hmm. So what is the right mix? Is this something we need to look at the condition? Say again? 80 to 60. 80 to 60, 60 to 80. Um, that's about, and then, so yeah, that's why I wanted to have this conversation. So what do you think, Wayne? <laughs> no, normally when we do this, it's usually on uh, back roads, mm -hmm. you know, the, County roads, and, uh, not not a thoroughfare like Route Five, where there's unlimited traffic on that road. Um, I mean, if you want to put an average daily trip, you know, eighty whatever, that I'd be fine with that. But I wouldn't want to limit it, cut it off at a like Mr. Sloan said. I, you know, you don't want to cut, the, you, you don't want to have to shut it down when when the going's good. Yeah. He's got the right to make money. He's got the right to fill a need. And and I agree with Mr. Richardson. You know, the quicker this is all done, the better. Um, if I may, Mr. Chair, got permission from your lawyer. Uh, just in the role of giving information to the board, and as you kind of always just take note of how things have been done in the past, I am um, and looking up that issue with the trips per limit. And whether it was there in this, we looked at some, or I looked at some other prior mines, just information to put forward to the board that um, 
in the nature of testimony because it's just observation of a judicial fact. Uh, the mine at 26901 Morganza Turner Road that was approved under conditional use application permit 19-131-021. Uh, the way trips were capped on that one was that there was a weekly limit of 300 round trips uh, and no more than 80 round trips per day. It's one way the board has done it in the past. Uh, at the Cheney Mine on Friendship School Road, CUAP 21-0026, it was just a straight cap of 100 trucks per day. Mm -hmm. Other thing I'd like to um, maybe take note of, and it's also for the public's benefit, Mr. Bradley, and it might get to a point you raised with Mr. Harper earlier, uh, zoning permits, conditional conditions that you would pass on this permit would be enforced through the Zoning Inspections Division at Land Use and Growth Management, not the Department of Public Works. Department of Public Works obviously has some things to do with the roads, but say, for example, that there is a 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and the allegation is that trucks are coming out of there at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. What folks in the public have to do when they notice things like that is call up the Department of Land Use and Growth Management and lodge a complaint, and then that becomes a zoning inquiry, and a zoning inspector is assigned to look into that, contact the complainant, see what's in there. If it were determined that a condition of the permit were being violated, that would become the subject of an enforcement case and could ultimately wind up in court. Obviously, we'd try to solve it with the applicant before that because at the end of the day, it's more about getting compliance than about collecting revenues through fines. But I say that maybe for whatever solace it would give the board or any member of the public and to let them know that's a resource to keep in mind if anybody in the audience is not familiar with that. Thank you. Uh, I think we're really closed. Yeah, but this question is important. <laughs> this is about public safety. You do realize he has three entrances on five. Three. One at Abel's, one down by, um, we used to be a guy farm, okay. and then another one down past Southern Maryland Park. Okay, we... we thank you, thank you. So, <clears throat> if we're going to limit the number of trips, I sort of like the um, scenario where we have an average for the day and a, and a maximum for the week, as, as Mr. Hauser mentioned. And that's just my, my opinion, that's just my... Well, as, as I said before, if we limit it much, it, it just extends the operation another month or two months. That's what we want to do. Well, but by the same token, I hate to see a thousand vehicles coming out of there in a day. Yeah. Um, Understood. I, I don't see how that would be possible. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it, whatever. I mean, that, that's right. what I'm saying. I, I wouldn't want to see that, but. We got vehicles a day. I do have to admit, out of all, th what, three different mining companies that are work down here, right? Two of them are very responsive to the people that live around them, and Mr. Sloan is one of those two that's very responsive. So his mines, he he's reactive. With the limiting of the trips, and the a cap. I don't want to tie his hands, but I don't want an explosion of vehicles coming out of there. So I've seen other things that he's done, and if he's willing to say that he will set a number, I'm, I'm kind of okay with going with it. Not necessarily making it a, I can make it a finding of fact, because I think he would try really hard to meet that. And if the neighbors notice anything untoward, they have plenty of repercussions, or excuse me, courses of action. Mm -hmm. To take. So, what do you gentlemen think of that? Am I off? That makes sense. I'd be happy to just put a, put a number on there, pick a number. 
I think what they estimated there, he's saying he's pretty close to, and he told us that number without looking at his estimation. <clears throat> I think that's where, if we could get the agreement to, I think that would be okay. Because all they're doing is expanding the what they're mining. They're not um, expanding intensity of operation. Mm -hmm. That's the word I'm looking for, intensity. Well, you, you have to remember one of the things that he's doing is he's mining this area right now. And right. this additional 12 acres he's going to start coming into, he's going to be restoring this piece, supposedly. Yeah. Um, and that he's really not increasing the, the, the number of trips. And then what we had here before is 40 to 50 additional plus 20 that may have been there before as they were at 70. And again, it's just an average. If, if, if that's really the case, um, he may have one day where he has 80 trucks come and go. And by the time somebody calls planning and zoning and they come up there, they're not going to see it. It's going to be gone. The next day, right. maybe 70. Or 60. Or 60, right? So that's going to be very difficult to, to enforce. I think if we put a number like 70 um, or 80, or whatever. You want to put an average with that too? Average 80 average, trips? Yeah. 80 average. trips per day, round yeah. trips. But if you do that, um, I think it's only going to be a, a grievous one purpose expansion if, that ha if, you, if you break that, that limit. And I don't think Mr. Sloan is doing that. Okay. I'd like to hear from them when we, before we make the decision. Um, I do like the berms that he's increasing. I do like the vegetation on top. I like the fact that he's doing it willingly. I do like the condition about the wells. That's good. I do know that with the state requirements for mines, they're pretty hard and fast on pollution, contaminants, things of that nature. So I think with if we discuss that and put that in here, I think I would be okay with this. Um, I did have one more question for Mr. Sloan. Um, what types of trees did you plant up there at the mine up at, uh, what is that, Morganza Turner Road? What did you plant up there? Green. Oh, okay. Giant. Yeah. Yeah. Who's authorized the snow? <laughs> Dine, diner. Green Dine. Giant. I, oh, Green Giant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got them in my backyard. Okay. Yeah. Anybody want to make a motion? Or is there any? Further Do we discussion? need to have any other discussion about limit vehicles with the uh, I, Mr. Longmore or anything, or do, are we good? I think we're good. I, I, my number's 80. We're, we're good with that, Mr. Lawnmower? 80 round trips per day, average? Average. Yeah, sorry, we're having a hard time hearing some of the discussion. 80, 80 round trips per day, average? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Sloan is fine with that. He believes okay. that's a promotion. Well, wait a second. Then we talked about water wells and then... Well, all those were previous conditions. That's correct. That's what I was going to state for the record, is that that was a precondition before or a condition before that we ought to carry through. Yeah. I think we should adopt the previous conditions. Okay. Right. Which includes that. And that also had the hours in it, correct? Yes. yes. That's easily enforceable by a phone call. Yeah, I'm ready with the motion. Okay. And the oh. matter of CUAP 23-0047, Sloan Loveville Gravel Mine, having made a finding that the standards for granting a conditional use and the objectives of section 51.3.82 of St. Mary's County comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met, I move to approve the request to allow the Sloan Loveville gravel mine to expand mining operations. Um, we uh, want to uh, include, the include the previous conditions. Right, from Somebody got a number for that? I'm getting um, CUAP 20 131 0001. 
Okay. Okay. And then we want to add one condition that we have a six foot berm. I, I assume that's on the Route 5 expansion. 50 foot wide. 50 foot wide with uh, the giant, the green giant trees to be planted. And the round trips per day not to exceed an average of 80. I second it. Aye. A discussion. I'll call for the vote, Ms. Medinsky. Yes. Mr. Payne. Yes. 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 Aye. An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from the date the order was signed, during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to the circuit court. Thank you all. The next case, number two for this evening, will be the Drove Collison VAAP 230240. The applicant is requesting a variance from Schedule 63.3A to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 5 and Three Notch Road Trail and to remove the 30-foot Type C buffer the 30-foot Type C buffer adjacent to the residential property uses. Additionally, the applicant is requesting variance from Schedule 64.3, 64.3.1 to reduce the required parking of 51 spaces, three ADA spaces included, to 20 spaces with one ADA space included. So with that, we will have the staff give their presentation. Amanda, you are under oath. Please, yes, sir. Thank you. So you've read this slide. Apologize for that. <laughs> uh, so uh, the legal advertisement for this was printed um, in the Southern Maryland News on November 24th and December 1st, 2023. And and certified mailings were sent to adjacent property owners located within 200 feet of the project. And a public hearing sign was posted on the property on or before November 29th, 2023. The property owner is rich, property owners are Richard and Gabriella Smith, while the applicant for this proposal is Christopher Hare. And the property consists of 1.93 acres. The property is located at 28895 Three Notch Road in Mechanicsville. The land use designation for the property is mixed uses, moderate intensity. And it is zoned Town Center Mixed Use or TMX. The property currently has an existing one story 11,961 square foot building, which was constructed, constructed in 2000. Additionally, the property has an existing office trailer, which will be replaced with a proposed 2,100 square foot office trailer and existing parking. The applicant is requesting to keep the existing features located on the property, but in order to do that, a variance from the buffer yard standards is required. The applicant is proposing to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 5 and Three Notch Trail and to remove the 30-foot Type C buffer yard for residential properties adjacent to this proposal. The applicant is additionally requesting a reduction in parking requirements. This application, okay, we went through this already, so I won't repeat it. Um, the site plan application has been approved or received uh, no comment from the Maryland State Highway Administration, I'm sorry, has been approved or has received no comment from the Maryland State Highway Administration, the Soil Conservation District, and the Southern Maryland Electric Cooperative. In addition, the site plan has received approval, MedCom approval, by an approval of a water sewer waiver, and the Health Department has pending comments. The existing structure and associated parking is to remain. The applicant is proposing to remove the 65 foot type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 5 and Three Notch Trail and to remove 30 feet 
of the type C buffer yards where the property abuts a residential use property. The areas impacted by the buffer yard variance is depicted in red or depicted in red. The proposed required buffer yards are shown as the dashed magenta line. And a visual depiction of the B buffer yard standards. Type B buffer yards are required along the right of way and for commercial properties adjoining the project property. A 65 foot type B buffer yard requires four canopy trees, five understory trees, 22 shrubs, and 11 evergreens or conifers planted for every 100 feet. Let me get ahead of myself here. Okay. Um, the 35 foot type C buffer yard requires five canopy trees, seven understory trees, 27 shrubs, and 14 evergreens or conifers planted for every 100 feet adjoining residential properties, and a fence or berm is required. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I have the standards if you'd like me to read them. Uh, otherwise, do you have any questions for me? This is an existing building. There is an existing building and there is an existing trailer. They're looking to install a larger trailer uh, where the existing office trailer is. And I believe you're just keeping and renovating the main building. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. So the change in use, is, it, it, so the, the, the work that's to be done is the change of a trailer? Right, I think there is, it's, it is a change in use to a collision, collision center, it, dealing with, yeah, did they mention this, that? Does this I'm sorry, consist, I lost track on it. Would this be back. an expansion of a non-conforming use? I don't believe in its expansion. I think it's just a requirement for a use type 61, which is the change in use. No, it wouldn't be. I think the existing use, the way it previously was, was a, um, I believe it was a warehouse. I know Mr. Longmore and Klein are going to correct me on that. What it's moving towards, though, is an auto body shop. That is a conforming valid use in the zoning district, so the zoning works out. They do have to go through the change of use analysis because, among other things, they are changing from, I think, a low-intensity use to what would be classified as a high-intensity use, which can trigger the imposition of buffer yards, and that's the only relaxation from the comprehensive zoning ordinance strictures they're looking for in addition to the reduction in required parking. Thank you. Thank you, John. Any other questions? How does the health department with pending comments affect our decisions here? So um, <clears throat> if we um, grant the variance, uh, obviously we won't change any of the regulations or ordinances that uh, the health department and the state health code Didn't we just Im do that? imposes because we don't have the jurisdiction to do that. So they'll have to comply with those pending comments and whatever regulations apply. Okay. So in other words, no effect. Right. Copy. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? The applicant. For the record, would you guys hold on a second and state your name and address for the record? Uh, Chris Hare. Chris? Amber Hare. And Amber Hare. And then do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Please sit down and go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, um, I'm here. Um, for this matter, on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Hare, uh, in relation to the variance request that Ms. Yao just described, uh, we have a brief presentation we'll run through um, the request and, and, and why we think we meet the conditions. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a, um, a sense, and some of this may be repetitive, so, so I'll run through it. This is just a copy of the GIS map uh, showing the program with the two, or the property with the two existing structures. Uh, that already exists there now. If we can go to the next slide. 
Um, this is the, an aerial photo from 2020, which was the, the clearest, more recent picture on the county GIS system. You can see there the uh, building that was there that was a building supply type warehouse type structure. It was, had a lot of drywall uses from what um, we understand. Um, you can see the condition of the property then with the trucks and the items around it uh, when that use was there and allowed. So if we go to the next slide. Um, to, to give you a little summary of the, of the request and to introduce you a little bit to my applicants, they are the contract purchasers of the property. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Hare are um, starting a business on the property to do um, collision repair work and, and automotive um, type work on it. Um, I'll note that the property, the primary structure, as was mentioned in Ms. Yow's report, um, the commercial building that's there, the largest uh, building there, uh, in the center of the property was constructed in 2000, according to Estat, so it's been there for more than 20 years. Um, and I'll show you some aerial photos that confirm that it's been there um, since that time. Um, the use that we're, they're proposing is an allowed use in their zoning district. Um, the applicants have submitted their site plan um, and it's being reviewed by all the TEC agencies, similar to what Mr. Scott said. They need to get all those approvals in, in order to have that, that plan approved and get their their permit to start using it. Uh, so to the extent the health department's still reviewing it, they still need that approval in addition uh, to what we're requesting tonight. Um, so they are seeking two variances so they can operate their business um, really within the same primary structure and the same layout as the previous business that's been there for 20 years. Again, the only reason we need the variances really is because of the change in use. They're not really trying to change the layout or the design of it. They are replacing an older trailer with a new trailer that's a little slightly larger. Um, but other than that, uh, there'll be no real change to the site other than the use on it. Um, but they are here requesting the variances for that. Uh, if, um, you know, the variances that we're seeking again um, does say to remove or reduce the buffer yards, but, um, and that is the request. The real reason is the primary structures are there and the items are there already on the property. They're not asking to change them other again to, to swamp swap the one trailer. Um, so in order to operate their business on the existing property and the existing layout that it's in, that's why they need the variances here. Um, so they're not really removing buffer yards that are already there. They're asking for approval not to need those since this is a structure that's already there, a structure that um, I know this board is aware um, many times at hearings both before you and the Planning Commission, there's a strong desire in our community not to leave businesses vacant to refill uh, businesses when they go out. That's what the applicants here are trying to do, and they need these variances according to the technical zoning rules. The um, parking spaces that they're seeking to reduce, again, or to keep it in the same layout that it is, it would be um, probably impossible to add that many spaces uh, to the layout the way it is. Uh, so again, they want to keep the existing conditions on the property uh, that ex have existed for more than two decades. So if we go to the next slide, uh, this is just for the record. Uh, confirming the staff report. Uh, this is an excerpt from the Maryland Department of uh, State Department of Assessments and Taxation uh, showing, you can see in the bottom left corner there that the primary structure was built in 2000. And if we go to the next slide, um, you'll see that um, this is an aerial photo of the site. Again, you can see a lot of debris and, and, and vehicles and stuff around the site. Uh, so it's been operated this way for a long time. Um, and you can see there that there was the structure and there was uh, some type of trailer or structure uh, where they're going to replace the trailer uh, that already existed there as long as 20 years ago. Uh, that was the closest aerial photo on the county uh, GIS system after 2000 when the, when the building was built. If we go to the next slide, um, these are just some photos to, to show you some of the property. This is the entrance of the property. Uh, while they are asking for removal of the technical requirement of the buffer, you can see there are some uh, mature trees that are already planted there and provide some buffer uh, to Route 235. They certainly want to keep those um, in place. You can see that entrance fence and gate, or the fence around the property and the entrance gate there. Uh, my clients have replaced the old fence that was there to upgrade it and make it nicer and, and, and better than uh, just over time it, it had gone into some disrepair. Uh, so they've taken it upon themselves to do that. So we thought this gave a good depiction of that. If we go to the next slide. Um, 
you can see the building on the left um, and the condition it was in uh, before my clients began working on the property in anticipation of the permits. Um, you can see uh, how it looked on that left slide in the, the middle photo and the one on the right shows some of the um, cosmetic and, and work that they did to make the building look what, what we believe is a lot nicer with that stone um, um, covering on, on the bottom half of it. And you can see they've also cleaned up the site uh, considerably. So if we go to the next slide. Um, we show you this slide because the, the site from which we're seeking the variances is the one, you can see a blue circle around a dot um, there just below the top red square or rectangle there. Um, that's the site that we're asking the variance from. My clients are also contract purchasers of that and the house next door to it and that field behind it that's outlined in red. Um, so my clients will have control or ownership of that if approvals are done and the, and the contract is finalized. Um, so we're showing you that to show that um, many of the surrounding properties will actually be controlled or owned by my clients. Um, so it will not affect third, third parties in any way as to those properties. If we go to the next slide, um, you know, the summary of our request is that again, these structures and improvements have been on the property um, and this location, um, trying to, to add these buffers to a property that's already developed in the way this is, we believe would certainly cause a practical difficulty uh, to my clients in engaging in this use that is allowed in the zoning district, uh, both as to the buffer yards and adding uh, that much additional parking than what exists there now. Uh, the property has had these commercial structures for more than 20 years, so certainly this will not change the, the nature of the neighborhood or have any real significant impact with it being a building supply use before with trucks that would deliver and haul out uh, dry drywall and those type of things. We think that even though it may be classified different in the zoning ordinance, it's not gonna have any more significant impact on the neighborhood or the neighbors uh, than the prior use. Um, and they simply wanna operate their, their business in this property that they found. They're a small business in our community and this variance will allow them get their start in this property uh, and begin there. Um, and again, they will control or own a, a significant amount of the property uh, around it. And there's no house right up on the buffer. You can see on the other property from the aerials at some distance uh, from, the, from the border of my, of my clients. Um, I'll also note that since we prepared the presentation, there have been uh, two emails of support that are in the record that I'm sure the board members saw uh, before this evening. Uh, those are some property owners on the other side of a three notch trail that farms some of the property over there. Um, yeah, Amanda, the, it's the farm just to the north of the large, on the other side of three notch <laughs> trail, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. just, just above that, I believe is where the bucklers, if I, if I ran their address right. Um, and they spoke in support of it and were happy and did not think that this use would have any concerns. And one of the neighbors also said how much, how appreciative they are of how much they've cleaned up the property since they began getting ready uh, to start their business there. So for those reasons, we submitted, uh, my clients actually submitted their <coughs> letters uh, in support of the variances. We believe that they show how that this request addresses each of the, the seven variance standards. And of course, we're available for questions. I'll ask, Amber, are you gonna speak? They wanna just share a little bit about kind of why they're here tonight and introduce themselves to you and be available for questions. Good evening, I'm Amber. Um, and as I told Mr. Longmore, it's not that I'm overtaking this conversation, but Chris and I went to high school together and he was the one in class when we had to do group presentations, Chris skipped class that day. <laughs> he's, not, he's not a public speaker. So um, although he takes a very big part in running this, uh, this, this business for sure. Um, so yes, Chris and I, um, we are starting a business. He has been doing this line of work since 94-ish, um, uh, working in the county for quite some time, and then I guess maybe 12 years, uh, went up the road to PG County. He's ready to come back home, um, be closer to the family. He's tired of the drive. Uh, it was always a risk that we weren't willing to take because we had children and uh, we were younger. Now we're willing to take that risk. We are able to take that risk. So here we are. Uh, we found this property, and um, we were super we were super excited about 
um, starting our business here, there's just a couple things that we need to address before we can do that. Um, one being the buffer yard, as Mr. Longmore uh, had mentioned. Uh, and the reason that we are here is because obviously the uh, we have the um, mound system and the trailer and then the asphalt and then the building. So there's, we don't have much room to work with, as you could probably see on the site plan for the buffer area. Um, and again, we also, uh, it's common ownership with the property that's outlined in red and then the backfield. Um, so, and then again, the parking spots, as I noted in the letter to the board. Um, so what we, what we see happening is most of the time when you take your vehicle in for collision repair, you make an appointment. Uh, you might come in for an estimate, but sometimes cars are, um, you know, you're given a, a specific time to drop off for, you know, what have you. And most of the time, those vehicles will go into the building for repairs. So we don't see, and again, I don't want to say every vehicle will be in the building because, you know, there's a drop off point and there's a delivery point too. So, but as far as the parking goes, the majority, I would say, of the cars are going to be in the shop. So possibly consider those parking spots are in the building because that's where the work's gonna be taking place. Um, that's all I have. I don't know if you guys have any questions for us. Uh, question? Yes, a question. I try to do my homework before we come here. Sure. And Mr. Lawmore in his presentation a couple times says, uh, we're not really changing anything. We're not doing too much. So what really are you doing? I just don't understand what we're here for. So I, I guess the, the biggest reason that we are here is because the change of use. So again, it went from a low intensity to a high intensity. I guess it's categorized. The business actually is categorized as a high intensity um, use. Right. use. So um, with that, we had to go through the change of use procedure through the county. And with that came about the variance for the, I mean, the ordinance for the um, buffer yards and also the parking spots. Okay. So. Thank you. Yeah, it's a designation in the table of uses and the zoning ordinance that says whether it's a high intensity or, or not use. And because of that, these buffer yards, if they were building from scratch, these buffer yards would, would apply. Uh, but just changing the use in this building is essentially what requires them to come in, seek a variance from you tonight. Any other questions? Yeah, um, could you go to slide three? No. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Wait a minute. That's four. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Right here? Yes. Now, it looks like across the back of the property, there's already something there. What is that, just grass? Mm -hmm. yeah, do you oh. uh, yes, so where a three-notch trail is on that, right. I'm sorry, okay. on the um, back side of that uh, yellow line, um, there were shrubs Planted there at one point. I can't really see what that is on that. Yeah. I think what you're seeing on there is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what that is is um, storage containers, I believe, from the previous owner. Um, there were, you know, those like tractor trailer storage boxes back there. That's what that is on that picture. And the ask the parking air the driveway, I guess, goes right up to that too. Are they still Does that there? answer? No, are they we still were, there? All of it's been removed. Yeah. Okay. All of it. Why don't you want any kind of buffer there? I don't, I don't. So, so we, on the. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So on the trail area, right on the other side, where you see those trailers on there that yeah. you were referring to. Right. That's a fence right there. So those trailers were right up against the fence and there's asphalt right there too. So in that area, we would have to dig up that asphalt in order to put trees and shrubs there. Now, on the other side of the fence, there are, if you look on my site plan, there are a, a couple mature trees on the other side of that. But also, there were some shrubs planted, but it looks like the county, and, and I'm not positive on this, but I assume that the county maintains that trail area. So they were just recently all mowed down 
everything that was there previously. They just recently came, and so I'm not sure if they – it were, wasn't tr uh, shrubs that we planted, but there were some shrubs back there that are no longer there as of a couple months ago, Chris. They came through and cut the trail. On, on your property? Mm -hmm. I guess they have a certain distance from the trail that they maintain, the county does. I'm not sure. Yep, 66 feet wide. On the the, uh, uh, the trail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The right of way. Yeah, the right of way. That's, 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 that's trail. The right of way is We're talking about isn't even, they don't have any control over it. Right. 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 They can only ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's horrible. Okay, well, that answers that question. Uh, uh, along the front, it looks like there are some trees and stuff, though. Yes. And and they've been there for quite some time. They're mature, decent-sized trees that, that we plan on keeping there. Do we know how far it is from the, I guess that's proposed parking area, or is, is it actual parking? Um, it's it's there. It's um yeah, the, like yeah. a gravel parking area. If you drop that pointer down, some there's a lot, like six or seven spots there across the front. Yeah, right there. Are they are those existing or those bar parking spots? Yes, they are. But in front of that, between you and uh, I guess that's Point Lookout Road. There are already some trees there? Yes, so if you go back to the slides where the trees are. Um, yeah, man, I had a photo of that on our on our it press. Is in the other presentation or in, in the? It was in mine, in, in the one we prepared, yeah. I'm sorry, which one? Which one is um, I still have yours. Well, just the yeah, just the site plan. Site plan that's up there is yeah, good so enough. Yeah, so the site plan you can see it too. So when you there, there you they go. are. Yeah. So the picture on your left is if you're pulling out. I guess yeah. If you're pulling out of the business to the left hand side, the, that is those trees along that fence line, and then the picture on the right, if you're pulling out of the business onto um, five. Those are the trees to the right. So I'm just showing, just showing you picture, uh, the do entrance and the exit on both sides. You can see. Do the you tree. plan on leaving those there? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay, that's all I got. So my question is on the Three Notch Trail side. Uh, you guys obviously have a fence. Um, are y'all going to put up any visual barrier or anything? So people walking through there will be able to um so we use that trail quite often ourselves we live off i mean we're six miles away from the business we're off of mechanicsville road so chris and i and our children use that trail quite a bit so um i mean we just plan on keeping uh aesthetically just pleasing to the eye that you know keeping things cleaned up um and i think we've done We've done that. We mm -hmm. hauled off quite a bit of trash. And, you know, like you see in the one picture with the storage boxes and all that kind of stuff, that, that's all gone. Yeah. Your neighbors wrote that in their letters, too. So. Did they? Okay. Yeah. Great. And um, we still have a lot of things that we want to do to the building. Mm -hmm. um, we did do the, um, the rock, you know, six foot up around, um, and we plan on painting it. We, we hope to extend the rock in the center in the front all the way up and put our sign there. So there's still things that we want to do to make it, you know, we live in this area too. We want it to be nice looking. Yeah. Um, of course, it brings better business too if you have, an, uh, you know, uh, something worth looking at. You don't want to bring your car to a place that's run down and trash all over. So, uh, yeah, we plan on doing those things too. We want it to look nice. Okay. All right. Thank and we you. want to keep our neighbors happy, of course. Yeah. How long had the uh, this property been vacant? Um, we pretty much. They moved. Out I think we signed the contract. It was they were moving out, as we were in talks with the owner. So it was pretty quickly. I mean, we're not in there working right now, but 
I want to um, say they well, left what, in what year? Gosh, January twenty two. Last year. The end. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, the end of last year they left. Yeah. So January. Yeah, I think didn't they used to have a advertisement out there on? Uh, it was L and W Supply. Right. Yeah, I believe they might have left January twenty. Three, I'm sorry. My, that, I think it was January 23. Okay. Because we started about March or April. And one other thing. Uh, the, you know, looking at the uh, amount of site plan, the replacement, it, for some reason, this is in the setback. And... It was approved in 2006. Is that generally the way things work? I'm sorry, what, which part well, of I you? thought a building restriction line kind of meant, some, meant something. I, know the, the, I, I have not seen the approvals from 2000 when the building was built. Um, I don't know what the lines were. That would have been the 1990s zoning ordinance. But... I was looking, uh, the, the trailer was put in 2006, as I recall. Oh, yeah, we don't somewhere. have knowledge of what approvals they got, or we know it's been there, existed for a long time there. Yeah, it's, oh, we can see it from it's there. really kind of strange. Uh, I didn't think you were supposed to do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm okay with this. And that, you know, and, and if it assists the board, my clients are going to have that property next door too, so it's right. the setback for their property. So, so it, complain to your neighbor, huh? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Are you going to be able to go across that trail? Is that your intent? As far as what, like joining the two properties, if you know. Uh, oh, adjoining the two properties. Honestly, we haven't got that far. Okay. We are just solely focused on this one right now, and uh, but no, I think the other is. We don't have any intentions for the back property at all. Okay. Part of the deal. Okay. <laughs> any other questions? No, sir. Thank you all. Let me open the meeting up now to public testimony. Is there anybody who would like to speak for or against the project? Hearing and seeing none, I will close the public testimony portion of the meeting to all verbal and written public comments. Um, discussion. I like what they're doing. I said I like what they're doing with the, with the property. It's, it's something that exists, something they've obviously cleaned up, um, and they're just trying to make good use of the property with the variances of the setbacks and parking. And the, the piece across the back must be a mute point if the uh, county's got that right away anyway. Unofficially, they write a letter to the county commissioners and ask them for a crossing. No, I, I'm not talking about the crossing. Evidently, they cleared, cleared all that there themselves, oh, all, yeah. All the trailers and everything, yep. And that's one of the uh, buffers. Mm -hmm. So... They, they don't even have control over that. On the uh, front, um, I was thinking, and, and you know, y'all can agree with this or not, I'm making it a condition that the remaining, uh, I mean, the trees that are there remain. And not have, you know, the buffer, but mm -hmm. leave, leave that there. But it's, it's up to y'all when it's just an idea. Would that preclude them from removing them if they had to, though? If something popped up unforeseen and they had to remove those trees, would that cause any issues or concerns? My only thought is, you know, we're not making them put a 65-foot bumper there, but, but I'd like to see some something remain there that's there yeah. already. <clears throat> well, I mean, trees that big, you know, you never know what's going to happen, and maybe they have to remove one. If we put something as a restriction saying leave those trees would that would they be in violation of that if they had to remove the trees if we put that as a condition probably have to put it back so would that 
would we be incurring a hardship on them later that we're an unforeseen hardship on them? If, if we impose this buffer yard on them like it's supposed to be, that would be a hardship. <laughs> Well, they don't, it doesn't sound like they're going to remove the trees anyway. Oh, I know. I agree yeah. with that. I don't so, think they are either. I, I don't think we need that kind of restriction. I think they are just going to do it. Okay. Well, I'm just throwing that out there. That's all. I just I would hate to limit them in that aspect if they're already looking to keep some, keep those things there anyway. Any motion? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Hope so. Gee, thanks, sir. Let me pull it up here. In the matter of VAAP 23-TAC-0240, <clears throat> Drove Collision Garage, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of, set of Section 63.3 Buffer Yards and Schedule 63.3A Buffer Yard Standards of the St. Mary County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met, I move to approve the variance request from Schedule 63.3A to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 5 in the Three-Notch Trail and to remove the 30-foot Type C buffer yards adjacent to the residential use properties and the variance request from Schedule 64.3.1 to reduce the required parking of 51 spaces, three American Disabilities Act spaces included to 20 spaces, one American Disabilities Act space included. Is there a second I, to the motion? I'll second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Vote, Mr. Bradley. I have no problem with it at all. Aye. Mr. Richardson. Aye. 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 That was quick. <clears throat> An order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30 day period follows from that date the order is signed during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to circuit court. The recording secretary will email a copy of the order when it has been signed. Good luck, guys. Great, yeah, you, guys. Good luck. Next public hearing number three for this evening is Pax River Village VAAP 230152. The applicant is requesting a variance from section 63.3.A to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 235, Shangri-La Drive, Great Mills Road, and FD Boulevard, FDR Boulevard, and a variance from section 32.1 to reduce the required 20% landscaping in the LCI district to 15%. Amanda, you're on. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry to make you read that. That was clearly my error. So I could have done that myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I gave you too much to read. All right. So um, as, as the Chairman uh, went through the request, I will just go through the public notifications. Uh, the legal app advertisement was printed on November 24th and December 1st, 2023 in the Southern Maryland News. Certified mailings were sent to adjacent property owners located within 200 feet of the project property and a public hearing sign was posted on the property on or before November 29th, 2023. The property owners are Lexington Park Shopping Center, LLC, Three Notch Ortho, LLC, Three Notch Road Office, LLC, and Joe Kodesky with COA Barrett LLC will be representing the applicants tonight. The property consists of 1,078,545 square feet or 24.76 acres. 
Here's a list of the properties and uh, legal descriptions and tax IDs, the affected properties. The property is located at the intersection of Maryland Route 235, Shangri-La Drive, Great Mills Road, and FDR Boulevard. The land use designation for the property is mixed use high intensity, mixed use medium intensity, and limited commercial slash industrial. And it is zoned high intensity mixed use district MXH, medium intensity mixed use MXM, and limited commercial industrial LCI. The property currently has an existing commercial retail office and lodging located on site constructed during the 70s. The applicant is requesting to keep most of the existing features located on the property. They're proposing to demolish the existing hotel and bank while renovating the office building. Additionally, they are proposing a new grocery. To accomplish this proposal, a variance from the buffer yard standards is required. The applicant is proposing to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 235, that's Shangri-La Drive, Great Mills Road, and FDR Boulevard. The applicant is initially requesting a reduction in the landscaping requirements from 20% to 15%. Agency reviews uh, was sent to the technical on May 1st, 2023, sent to the Technical Evaluation Committee approving agencies. November 13th, 2023, the received a Planning Commission approval. And the next step is a major site plan review and approval by all reviewing TEC agencies. So the existing features plan. Plan. The areas impacted by removal of the 65 foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 235, Shangri La Drive, Great Mills Road, and FDR Boulevard is depicted by the dashed blue line. The green shading reflects the existing landscaping. And the areas with the green shading reflect the proposed 15% landscaping. Then the visual depiction of the B buffer yard standards. Here, the type B buffer yards are required along the right of way and for commercial properties adjoining the project property. A 65 foot type B buffer yard requires four canopy trees, five understory trees, 22 shrubs, and 11 evergreens planted for every 100 feet. Where are the standards, uh, general standards for granting variances? I can read through those if you need me to. Do you have any questions for me? Who's for? No. No questions? Okay, okay the applicant. Who will be representing the applicant? Good evening again, and sorry you got to hear my voice one more time tonight. Um, I'm here, before uh, start, proud proud to be here. Before um, you start, yeah. could you raise your right hand? Thank you. And for the record, would you state your name and address? Joe Kajeski with COA Barrett LLC. Our uh, office address is 100 Gypsy Drive, Prince Frederick, Maryland. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good evening again. Um, and we are very excited to be here tonight on this project. Um, I know most of you know this property. It's a property that's been developed commercially in Lexington Park uh, for many, many decades. Um, it is one of the areas of Lexington Park that the county has consistently uh, targeted for redevelopment. Um, and we're here tonight uh, representing uh, not just the developers, but the owner of the property. They bought the property and they um, are taking great efforts to uh, redevelop what was formerly known as Millicent Plaza um, into what we think will be just a, a great amenity for the county and for that area, Lexington Park. Um, you can see that the overall project um, involves three parcels. Um, it includes that existing shopping center, 
um, the existing hotel motel site. Of course, it used to be the Belvedere Motel for those of us that were, were here when it was named that. Um, and there's some, a small office building on Three Notch Roll Road. Um, and again, the main goal is to revitalize the southwest corner um, of the intersection just prior to gate two of uh, the Naval Air Station. Um, it includes either a removal and complete demolition of the existing uh, hotel that's there, um, of one of the small office buildings and the existing bank um, that's in the center of it. It's Bank of America currently. Um, and um, in total, uh, 92,000 gross square feet of floor area is being demolished as part of it. Uh, it also includes adding a new structure that'll include an Aldi grocery store um, with a, another small, smaller space, a 1,300 uh, square foot space uh, to screen the service entrance of Southern Tire, uh, which will intend to stay there. Um, it includes the repurpose of, all the of an existing office building that's there um, and it include a new coffee shop uh, with a drive through and some other casual restaurant tenants and retail space. Um, lastly, it will have a drive through ATM replacing that existing bank. That bank is uh, leaving the project. So if we go to the next slide, um, some of this again will be repetitive. I, I apologize if it is, but this is really, you know, on a different scale, of course, but similar to the last application that I was here before you with just before this uh, applicant. Uh, this is a fully developed existing uh, project. Um, and what essentially my clients are doing is they're going to make it a lot better and get it a lot closer to what the current buffer yard standards would be um, by redeveloping this and make it just a, a much better project overall. So this is the area uh, in red is kind of the full project area and the property that my clients are working with. If you go to the next slide. Um, this is just some of the aerial photos of the of the shopping center as it exists uh, currently or recently. If we go to the next slide, you can see the hotel in the background. Um, this is a, an, an illustrative site plan um, of the project. You can see the yellow buildings that exist in our area are existing ones that are going to be repurposed, as mentioned. Um, the building F that's there will be the building uh, housing the Aldi uh, grocery store. And that F2 is the appendage that, that I mentioned before, a smaller new um, space for a shop of some kind. And then building G will house some other uses, including the coffee shop uh, with the drive through service there. Of course, this is located in between what is now gate one and gate two of, of the Naval Air Station. Um, and you can see from this, and there'll be other plans that show it, there will be um, much improvement to the a visual depiction of the property from uh, Maryland Route 235. There will be more uh, green space and plantings added there than exists now. Um, so there will be a lot of improvements to what it currently exists, and you can see that on this plan uh, depicted there. If we go to the next slide. Um, so the variance requests that were here are, are to eliminate the Type B buffer yard requirements along Three Nod, Shangri-La, and Great Mills Road, and FDR Boulevard. Uh, and essentially, it's just to allow the existing structures and parking to remain. Again, we're not removing any buffers that are already there. It's simply to allow the structures that are there to remain. And again, some of them are going to be demolished, and there will be some um, added buffering and, and green space added that's not there now. And we also are requesting a variance to reduce the minimum landscaping percentage uh, from 20% to 15%. Uh, the, the code requ would require 20% on a new site if you're building from scratch. Um, we're asking that it be reduced to 15%, but I will note, and you'll see this in the numbers as we go forward, uh, there is landscaping being added to the site that's not there. So it'll be a net positive, but it will not go up to 20%. It'll be up to 15%. So if we go to the next slide. Um, these are um, the standards that are there. This is all addressed in the staff report. Um, you know, as mentioned, this project has been around for many decades, since the 1960s into the early 80s. Uh, there were no, the predated the buffer yard and landscape requirements. Um, so it certainly would be a practical difficulty of this um, owner of property coming in to help redevelop the project that is in need of it. Uh, if they had to install the new buffer yards, they'd have to tear up so much of the property to do that. So of course, it'd be a practical difficulty. Um, this, uh, the existing conditions, um, you can see, are not applicable to other properties. This is a very large center in that area uh, at that intersection of all those primary arteries. 
Uh, this is not for property value exclusivity. Um, it, it is to come in and really redevelop this and make it a, a thriving uh, shopping center where one used to be many years ago, but has gone into some disrepair over the years. Um, the current and previous owners did not cause the need for this variance request. Again, those buffer yard requirements were not there when this was first developed. Um, and we believe this is well within the public welfare and interest. Um, it will not negatively impact the public welfare. We think this will add a great deal to this area, particularly, and this came up before the Planning Commission last month uh, when the site plan was approved for this, um, uh, particularly adding a grocery store. That seemed important to the Planning Commission to have a grocery store in that area of our county uh, where one is needed uh, for the citizens that live there, being able to walk there and, and get there easily uh, from that part of Lexington Park. We just think it's great, uh, excited to see this happen. So if we go to the next slide, um, this um, shows you again kind of an aerial uh, photo of this. And, and Joe's sitting here beside me, if you want to jump in on any of these. Yeah, I'll just say that chair. kind of the purpose of this slide is to show the adjoining properties, um, you know, in and around the center. And uh, you'll notice that really no buffer yards are provided by any of the, the, the adjoining properties as well. I mean, um, Shangri-La Boulevard is pavement basically from building to through 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 the road same with great mills um fdr has some street trees in the right or i'm sorry um three notch has some street trees in the in the right of way which certainly will remain but you know up all the way along the frontage and even farther towards gate two um you know really these 65 foot type b buffer does not exist um, on any of the adjoining property so i kind of just wanted to include this slide to, to show that as well if we go to the next slide. Um, and this is an existing conditions aerial. Anything you want to uh, highlight on this, Joe? No, I'll just I'll point out, and I'll try to get the exact numbers, but talking about um, you know, the landscaping that's there today, I think is 8.7% of the site. Um, from going from memory, I have to have check. Have those numbers coming up. Have the numbers coming up. So we, we can take a look at that. And you can just see, too, that um, Again, no, no real buffer exists on the property. Yeah, and so you can see on this, uh, Joe, you remembered it correctly, there's 8.7% uh, of the site area has existing landscape, um, and the existing landscape within that 65 foot where the type B buffer would be is about 32,480 uh, square feet. And you'll see later that there is going to be an increase in that uh, if this is approved tonight. So if we go to the next slide. Um, these are some photos uh, of the existing uh, conditions of the property. So you can see this uh, three notch in Shangri-La, the intersection there, and then also three notch looking uh, southeast um, along that road going toward gate two, I believe. If we go to the next slide. Um, this is another uh, depiction of Shangri-La. You can see the current exi existing conditions of it. Um, you can see there's a lot of entrances going into the shopping center there. They're going to be consolidated to make better traffic flow. That part of the site plan, again, was approved. Uh, the concept site plan was approved by the uh, Planning Commission on the 13th of last month. Um, if we go I mean, to the you can point out, too, that even you know, the existing building that is to remain there is obviously with, right up against the, you know, the right-of-way and within that 65-foot buffer. So yeah. this is just an existing condition that, we want to maintain, but you'll see in the future slides that we're going to definitely assist with more buffering in and around that. Okay. And these are some of the proposed conditions. So you can see um, that building that had, it almost looked like turrets on the, on the side of it. This, the building will be repurposed. Repur some of that will be, it'll be uh, made smaller. Some of the areas will be taken off of it and it'll be redesigned. So that you can see this, the coffee shop will be the only shop in that center with a drive through but it'll wrap around the back of the building. Um, again, that was uh, approved by the Planning Commission. You can see some of the green space that's been added uh, to this dep depiction uh, that does not currently exist there on Shangri-La. Yeah, and in that particular case where no, like you said, no buffer exists now, we're creating a 40-foot landscape buffer um, adjacent to that building along Shangri-La. Um, everybody knows the donut connection there. You can see the uh, existing and what's proposed there. Um, and as Joe mentioned, you can see some of the proposed landscape.
buffer that uh, will be added there where there's essentially sidewalk and asphalt uh, now. So that's where one of the, that's where the main entrance going into that area off of Shangri-La will be. And you can see a depiction of what the landscaping uh, is intended to look like. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, this is another depiction of the same uh, building there. Um, you can see that it might have been an old entrance there that's blocked by dumpsters and stuff now. You can see the plan to um, build around those and, and shield those and then also add the buffering around it uh, just to really improve uh, the shopping center, make it look more aesthetically pleasing, have more green area, um, just be a nicer place to be. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, these are some of the existing photos of Great Mills Road, um, essentially looking at, at one of the current entrances to the shopping center. You know, Popeyes and the, the, entry, the <coughs> gate two is straight ahead going down Great Mills Road on that right photo on the left one. You can see <coughs> where Saki and uh, Shotan Deli is on the back side of, of that building. We go to the next slide. Um, and again, that's the same building that has Showtime and Saki in it. And then you can see the proposed uh, plan on the right. Um, again, cleaning it up, replanning, uh, redoing the buildings to make them more modern and more clean looking. Um, all of that um, shows you kind of what that area where a 60, where the, the B buffer would be required to be. This is what my client's proposing to, to do around the existing conditions. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, Showtime Deli is there. As I mentioned, you can see, again, kind of um, finishing off the sidewalk there, cleaning it up, um, making it, you know, a safer turn there, um, and just all around improving the buffer. Um, on there and replanning, as you can see. To the next slide. Um, FDR Boulevard, that's the entrance currently going in. Um, you know, again, this is one of the areas where a full buffer would be required, but you can see the, the change in the entrance there to make it a safer entrance so you don't turn right, right as you come off of Great Mills Road. Uh, that's Great Mills Road we're looking from in the first photo uh, on to FDR. Um, and you can also see some of the plantings and green areas that my client's proposing. Go to the next slide. So, Jay, you want to talk about this one, the uh, proposed conditions? Sure, yeah. So, again, c looking back at existing conditions, we are, um, the total site area had about 8.7% landscape, and we are increasing that um, up to 15% by removing pavement, um, actually removing portions of buildings, um, and then creating um, – Interior landscaping with the park within the parking lot really doesn't exist at all today. It's pretty well just a sea of asphalt, um, kind of property line to property line. So, you know, not only does it, you know, we're creating that landscaped area. It helps with traffic um, circulation, pedestrian safety, um, and just becomes more inviting uh, shopping center. And then the same thing with the buffer, uh, the Type B buffer yard around all the perimeter because of the uh, roadways. Um, we're almost doubling, I think, the number, the amount of landscape and what would be that 65-foot setback from what's there today. So um, we feel like we've tried to, uh, you know, soften the views from the roadways, um, but while maintaining sort of the existing uh, development that's there um, and, and redevelop it accordingly. Um, so we've gone through a lot of the, the standards um, already the last couple. What's that? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, so the traffic and, and public safety, that was uh, a traffic impact analysis was prepared um, presented to the Planning Commission of the concept site plan. Um, we and, and it was found by the Planning Commission uh, to be approvable under the APF ordinance. Uh, these are existing businesses that are there. Um, several of them, you know, the, the older buildings are being um, demolished and the new businesses we don't think will have any um, negative impact on vehicular traffic. In fact, the pattern within the, the area and reducing some of the entrances, particularly along Shangri-La, uh, we think will make it a lot safer there. There'll be fewer entrances uh, than there currently exist. So if we go to the next slide. And the last standard is whether it meets the intent of the comprehensive plan. Um, and we believe that this, uh, you know, of all of them is, is probably the most obvious uh, element that we can meet. Uh, the county has long encouraged infill redevelopment and to redevelop existing uh, centers 
Um, as I mentioned, one of the other hearings I've been uh, in front of this board and the Planning Commission many times where the wish from the crowd and the wish from the, the commissioner of the board is that um, we redevelop the areas we have instead of moving further up 235 or in different areas. Uh, you have an owner and a developer here that has come um, and is willing to do that, is planning to stay here and develop this and do the project right. Um, and the granting of these variances, we think, will allow them to implement uh, all these improvements um, and make this a very, um, a very beneficial and rewarding uh, project for our community. So I think that's the last slide. Is that, is that right? I think so. Okay. So again, Joe's here is the, the engineer from COA who's working on a lot of the design. We also have representatives of our clients that are here if any of you have any questions uh, for them as well. And again, these are variances that we need based on existing conditions, similar to the other property. The one benefit we have on this one that just was infeasible on that one, but my, my client has undertaken here, is they are increasing a lot of the, the landscaping from what it is now, so it'll be a net positive. And they are adding more landscaping buffer in the areas where a 65-foot buffer would be required if this was a new development. Uh, I'm very familiar with the area. Uh, it looks like a, a vast improvement, uh, but the parking down there was very haphazard. Mm -hmm. It looks like you consolidated the parking areas. Is that yeah. true? Yeah. Do you want to talk about that, John? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we've we've certainly added uh, landscape islands to um, <coughs> kind of configure the parking, direct people into the right travel ways, so they're not just cutting through, you know, haphazard, like you said. We've uh, consolidated and closed multiple entrances off of Shangri-La and FDR, so where we would, so that there's just less points of egress and getting people in the in the right uh, drive aisles throughout the parking lot. Okay, is there more parking spots or less parking spots as before? I would say there's less. Um, we we hit we're right on the number that's required based on um, the tenants that we are proposing. So we're well, per the zoning ordinance, we've hit right at, right at the number that we need. So you say that there's, there's less parking spots. That's my gut feel. I don't have the I don't have the numbers in front of me. No, I, I, but I say it's really the, the the hub of the of, of St. Mary's County. It's, it's right you're right in the center. Of the, you're in the hub, so it's, you're making a vast improvements. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the parking's important. Yeah, yeah. The, the St. Mary's zoning ordinance is you know. Um, they want you to try to not exceed what's required by the code, um, and that's kind of where we're where we're at with we're providing the max without exceeding the amount required by the zoning ordinance. Well, the the layout looks very nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, another big part of the project is to make it welcoming to people to kind of come here and come back here. You know, if you've been there before, and also welcome, and also make it feel as safe as it can. And, and I, I think to and you can see that where building A and building B here are here, you can see that they're opening up that walkway that's kind of covered right now. They're removing the cover from it and having uh, it accessible through the buildings uh, with some parking there as well. It's kind of the area where Baskin Robbins and Bambinos, if any of you remember that, used to be down there. Um, that's not used as much now. I, I think people don't feel that it's um, as welcoming or safe as maybe it was 30 years ago. They're going to open it up really uh, make this a more usable, um, friendly, and safe, safer development, certainly, um, in a way that sort of is more uh, what folks expect and want today with traffic patterns and otherwise. So speaking of traffic, what you said no negative impacts to traffic, but what impacts to the traffic are you going to have? Because that's two main arteries going into the base, and drive times, it's crazy down there. Yeah. yeah, so so Mike Lenhart um, with Lenhart uh, Traffic Group did a performance traffic study um, and said all the intersections will operate at an acceptable level within, you know, Lexington Park District. For this first phase, um, you know, even though they have been unoccupied for some time, um, the, you know, the hotel motel at some point was a traffic generator that has gone away. Um, so actually, in actuality, for what we're proposing, is a net decrease by a slight number of trips. So the hotel was a traffic generator, but that hasn't really impacted, them going away really hasn't impacted traffic 
in that area. Um, mainly, I know, because I drive it every day. Sure. <clears throat> if anything, after COVID, traffic's increased to pre-COVID levels now. So what I'm more concerned with is your construction extending out into the Three Notch Road and the um, Great Mills Drive area. Or is, how is that going to be impacted by what y'all are planning to do here? Are you going to have to close lanes to get that construction operated? Or what, what kind of impacts have you planned? Have you guys communicated with the base? You've got a lot, uh, you're going to impact a lot of people if that happens. Yeah, I, um, obviously the applicant and, and, and we have been in contact with the base throughout this project to get to get this far. Um, there will be minimal uh, impact to Three Notch Road. Um, we're, we're not really replacing any curb or maintaining the existing entrances. Um, there is some sidewalk work that will occur. Um, and that would be in accordance with the state highway permit, both for th anything on three notch, great mills, um, you know, would be an SHA permit. Typically they restrict that to nighttime work, you know, middle of the week. Mm -hmm. Um, my assumption is that department of public works would have sort of the same guidelines for Shangri-La where we are closing more entrances, doing some more curb work and sidewalk work. So there will be, um, for that work, probably at least one lane closure. Um, it might be have to happen at night, depending on, you know, work hours, certainly no holidays, all the things like of that nature. Um, but all that being said, for the amount of work that's happening in the site, the amount that's going to be affecting uh, the existing roadways is, is pretty minor. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I had a I've got a couple of questions and observations and statements. Uh, let's see where the, I guess, donut connection. Uh, that used to be a bank. And the bank had a, I guess, drive through. Well, uh, I hope that's taken out, the drive-through there. I was coming in there the other day to go to the, I came in off of, uh, not the other day, but a couple of months ago, came in off of uh, 235. And anyway, I was trying to traverse my way down to the, uh, where the pharmacy is. So I was going to, well, I guess you have to park in the back of the pharmacy. At least I was. Well, uh, you know, as I was going down there, a car was coming my way, I guess, to go. I don't know where they were going. <laughs> then somebody comes, they, then another car is racing me because I guess he got his dozen donuts or something and so here we are three different two two lanes of traffic going one way and one in the middle going the other and that's that's why someone else has said this too that parking lot is yeah. bad news mm -hmm. it always has been right i mean it has nothing to do with y'all right and then uh, another question. Uh, it was it was a, the last house standing, and that's been taken. You know, all of a sudden it would disappeared, and it was in right next to uh, where McDonald's used to be. You know, uh, oh, sure, Saki, and uh, and Showtime that that building now. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, it's a huge green space there. Right. You know, where it's the footprint of where the house was. Right. And I don't see where that serves any purpose. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what the purpose would be, you know. And going up to uh, three notch, I mean, uh, FDR. 
if you turn right there, you'll end up going to the uh, stop sign. Stop signs, I don't know how long they've been now. I don't think that too terribly long. I, I really don't recall mm -hmm. because uh, anyway, I turn uh, right to, you know, where the, the former post office was and I go up and, you know, come in the back of the Belvedere, comes to a stop sign. Well, about five feet away from me is another stop sign for where the, uh, the former uh, gymnastics center was. And, uh, sure. And that makes no sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, and then it, you know, so you have one stop sign and have to look to the right to see if anybody else is busting through there. And then, you know, you go in back of the Belvedere, which is really sad. And then, uh, you know, Mr. Tyre, and then, it, you know, then you had to, it was just a mess. And then you had to watch for somebody coming in off of uh, Three Notch Road and, that's why it was getting to the bank is even an issue. Well, the former bank, everything in everything. I'm speaking in the past now. I like to, <laughs> no, I'm following you. And, That's what I remember. And anything would be an improvement, believe me. And the uh, and the purchase of, you know, it's not on him, but you know through nothing that no one, well, I don't know, you know, it's, it's so much runoff there, you know, and, you know, you, they say, uh, what do they say, turn around, don't drown? Well, you don't have any choice there. <laughs> you have to go through it. And uh, if something could be, I don't know what you could do, but, yeah, it's a tough area. Yeah. That whole all the stuff that I've described is very challenging. And uh, it's, but I think, you know, lighting is really a help mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, when I was on the court, you know, as a, you know, uh, not a witness, but on the jury, uh, you know, it's all kinds of people that are there, you know, mm -hmm. all night long that just hang around the streets. And so someone was, you know, they decided not to walk on sidewalks, which is, and through that, and they didn't quite make it. So, and I'm sure that happens all the time. So, yeah, anything that you can do to alleviate some of this would be that uh, would be very thoughtful and thankful. And but that that one green space on Great Mouse Road, I don't get that. Yeah. And I, I realize that's where the house was. It's a two-story house, in fact. And uh, and. Then one day it was gone, and everything caught it off. And are oh, they still going to have, uh, you know, people set up and sell uh, crabs and fish and all that out there in the parking lot? Oh, I don't know. We would have to ask the uh, owner on that one. <laughs> yeah. He is here. <laughs> and uh, uh, at one time it was pretty much of a used car lot. Everybody was just piling their cars in there and, you know, had for sale this, call this, call that. And, you know, you see people traversing. I mean, I thought it was a used car place and, <laughs> and it was just people trying to <clears throat> unload their problems to someone else. Uh, and that was addressed, but 
you know, I'd seen, you know, these people, you know, especially uh, not so much this time of the year, but, you know, when crabs are running and stuff like that. And, you know, it's a place, place for that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's there if you're trying to improve it. So. I mean, one of the things we're really excited about, when, when you look at the site plan that's up on the screen, you can see some of that landscaping that we mentioned that's going to be added really will address a lot of those traffic flow and really mm -hmm. safety issues. You know, cars aren't going to be able to fly through those seas of asphalt the way they can now. Right. Because you can see how it's landscaped and they're, and they're adding the drive aisles that will, you know, still have traffic there. We think it'll be very successful and have, you know, a lot of customers for the for the businesses that'll be there, but in a much safer way, instead of just being wide open, right? Free fall, yeah, old west, way it yeah. Is now. yeah. Yeah. Just, just to maybe touch on a couple more points. Um, lighting obviously will be uh, part of this site plan. We have done a photometric study, or the lighting consultant has done a photometric study. We're utilizing some of the old lights, but adding several more um, to make sure we're meeting current, you know, lighting foot candle requirements throughout the parking lot. Um, so that's going to increase safety at night for sure. Um, as Chris said, uh, uh, you know, the, I think the main issue that you speak of within traffic is the sea of asphalt with no control. I mean, you know, there's just striping and you can crisscross throughout there however you want with so many access points. Um, and again, by creating these curb islands, um, we're also creating a drive between building C and building A. So, so big lots and what's in that edge of building C. Uh, yeah, right now I think it's vacant, but not important, but we're kind of connecting that right the edges. parking lot that's along Shanger La to the back parking lot too. So you, you, you have that uh, in, inside the site connection rather than crisscrossing back out on the Great Mills and then making a right on FDR. Um, and then uh, I'll just point, you know, not part of this application and certainly something in the future, um, but the applicant has, or the owner has looked at various options of how to use that sort of out of place green space on Great Mills, um, you know, for a potential pad site, but uh, not what we're here today for and certainly something that's uh, very conceptual in nature at this point. So other questions I've got, um, you have a lot of small mom and pop businesses within this space, Donut Connection, the Saki House, um, and a couple others. How are they going to be impacted during your construction? Uh, what? How do you expect that to um, increase or decrease their flow of traffic during construction and then after? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obviously, there will be impacts during construction. There's, you know, kind of no way around it. But the uh, for the tenants' space and, quite honestly, for the, you know, developer space, uh, you know, they're going to try to minimize that as much as possible. These uh, stores will remain open. We've talked about having in some places, not necessarily a donut connection, but where we're doing some facade changes, taking off uh, overhangs where, you know, we'll have pedestrian, you know, protection so that people can still walk through and get access to the buildings mm -hmm. during construction. Um, it will be a headache. I mean, there's no doubt about it. We're going to do a lot of work. Um, but it's on in everybody's best interest to, to keep those businesses open, uh, minimize the disruption, um, you know, whether that's what times where the work can be done. You know, basically that's all in control by the by the owner at this point. Um, afterwards, we think it's going to be more much more vibrant shopping center. We're bringing in an anchor grocer that's going to pull more people to the site, um, revitalizing it, making it safer. So we think it's just going to generate even more business for those users. Okay. Thank you. Is this going to be done in phases or kind of all at once then? Well, um, I mean, obviously it's going to take, take some time, but it is the idea that this is all going to be, I mean, first step one, I believe is going to get the, the Aldi under construction. They have some real uh, strict deadlines to be um, functioning at the end of next year. So, we're, we're coming up on a year of construction, but and um, Atlantic Realty Group and the owner can maybe talk about more of that timing and how much will occur kind of concurrently. Um, but I think the idea is to have the site all done in one phase. You know, okay. All right. 
Any other questions? No, sir. Sure. In that case, I'll close the meeting and open it up to public testimony. Is there anybody who wish to speak for or against the project? In that case, I will close the meeting to all verbal and written public comment and open it up for board discussion. Sounds like a good deal. Is it done yet? Yeah. Can we speed up? That's right. Uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with the area. Yeah. And whatever you can do to make it better in a parking lot that's consolidated, I think it's a wonderful idea. I, I think providing definition into the turn lanes and into the parking area. As Mr. Payne had stated, I think that's going to be a great improvement to the area itself. I hope the small businesses can survive the impact because a lot of those places have been there for years and they're got a warm spot in, spot in my heart, especially donuts. <laughs> yeah. I think we're building a new one in Hollywood, one that we approved many, many yeah, I years think so. ago. They're starting to build that one, right? Yeah, but still, that was one of the original ones. Okay. Right. In that okay. case, I think we're ready for a motion. And the matter of VAAP 23-0152, Pax River Village Center, having made a finding that the standards for granting a variance and the objectives of Section 63.3 of the Buffer Yards and Schedule 63.3A Buffer Yard Standards of the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance have been met, I move to approve the variance request to remove the 65-foot Type B buffer yard along Maryland Route 235, Shangri-La Drive, Great Mills Road, and FDR Boulevard, and the variance request to reduce the required 20% landscaping to 15%. Second. Although, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The, an order reflecting the board's decision will be prepared by staff and signed by the board within 60 days. A 30-day period follows from that date the order is signed, during which any aggrieved party may appeal the board's decision to circuit court. The recording secretary will email you a copy of when it has been signed. Very good. Thank you, and good luck. And is it Bill, chat? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm right. That's the question I'll get here shortly. <laughs> yeah. Good Thank luck. you very much, Thank gentlemen. You very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good job. Um, we have a couple of things for approval that we haven't seen until just now. One of them is the monthly public hearing schedule, and that is on the computer, I think. Mm -hmm. It's up over there. It's not up here. There it is. Uh, the next thing would be the minutes from the 11-21 meeting. Um, and then we've got the approval of one, two, three, four, five orders, sets of orders, one of which is the seven points agro cultivation, which I'm sure everybody's anxious to see. Um, I have two copies, I have three copies of them here, and it's also copies on the computer um, that Amanda will help you find if you need to, to do that. And I would suggest we take a 15 minute break and come back at 930 to approve these things, give you all a chance to look at them. Okay. There's only one change for the, uh, for all of them. The one correction for all of them, or is it just the one? Uh, all of them I caught before just handed you a thing. There was a clerical copy on the signature page that just that section that says those who voted to deny the amendment appeal variance as the case might be. Um, every case the word used was amendment correctly. The template just didn't auto populate correctly. So it was the, whether it said variance um, or approval or whatever. Right. So that's the only change on these. And uh, if you would help, if you would help. One down this way, one down this way.
call the meeting back to order. And we have several items for approval. The first of which is the monthly public hearing schedule for next year. And we have a copy of it up, the, up on the screens and up there on the screens. So I'll take a motion to approve that. Make them approve the schedule. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one I have is the meeting minutes from November 21st, 2023. Any revisions or changes? i make a motion we approve the minutes. Your second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one I have <clears throat> is the orders for the Williams property. And again, that was uh, Mr. Williams. He was seeking a variance from St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance <coughs> to approach on the southern extension property lateral setback line to add a boat lift to a replacement in Kind Pier. Make a motion we sign the order. Is there a so second? There. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one I have is the Gall property. And that is Mr. Gall and his wife, or the applicants, they were seeking a variance from the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance to disturb a non-tidal wetland buffer, the wetlands buffer, construct, to construct a 24 by 28 deck. And again, that was approved by the commissioners. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, I said it. The third one is the Farrell property. And, and again, they, the applicant was seeking a variance from the St. Mary's County Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance for, cleaning, for clearing more than 30% of existing forest cover to construct a house. Make a motion to sign the order. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next item that I have is the Moore Schumer um, property in which they were seeking a variance from the St. Mary's County Zoning Ordinance to disturb the non-tidal wetland buffer and from the zoning ordinance and another section to disturb the critical area buffer to construct a house and driveway. We make a motion to sign the order. There a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the last one I have is the Seven Points Agro Cultivate Cultivation Center in which the, it was an appeal to the decision of the county uh, land use and growth management director for what, a what was uh, this about again <laughs> don't don't go there <laughs> don't go there for a um expanded septic system that was issued by uh the county or signed off on by the county that was really issued by the self department i'll make a motion we sign the order second all in favor aye aye that i think is where i have Let's see. More humor, seven points. Other items. Farewell. I'd like to take a moment to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, and I'd like to thank you guys. It's been great working with everybody here. It's <clears> been a lot of fun. Um, I have enjoyed this, which I didn't think yeah. I would. And sitting on this side of the table is a lot different than sitting on the other side of the table back there. Oh, but I can tell you that. Mm. Thanks yeah. for all you taught me. I, th I think you've done a really good job, though. I really well, appreciate the work you've done. Thank you. I well, can't see the forest and the trees. <laughs> good man. <laughs> I mean, all you guys. I mean, even his staff has been a great help to everything. They keeping keeping us straight in order and everything. The reports are all felt well done and kept up and. Well, we wanted to thank you um, on behalf of St. Mary's County. We really appreciate the time that you've put in. I think, um, Chairman, it's, is it 14 years? 14 years? For me, it is. For you, it is. Yeah. And then you have six? Yes. It's 14 and six. And then uh, Lynn Delahaye um, had six as well, right? So that's a lot of time. And we know it's not always easy. And you're not always popular. But it's a tough job. And somebody's got to do it. So we really appreciate you for it. 
So oh, thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Well, thank you. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. I've enjoyed it. Make a motion we adjourn. Our second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas.